Okay, we should be live. All right. You know, I just got to wait for the rest of you guys to show up and tell me if the audio sounds awful or not. <laughs> uh, this is going to be my first time doing like a bake-along type video or cook-along type video. So uh, if you guys could let me know in the comments uh, if you're watching this afterwards or while you're watching right now, and just let me know if there's any other recipes in the future you'd want to see. Um, you know, as the next, next time we do like a bake-along, cook-along, what, uh, what sort of so we do like dinner, breakfast, yeah. So this is gonna be, like I said, this is my first time doing this. So hopefully we don't have too many, uh, uh, we don't have too many hiccups here. I don't know if this is working. Oh, looks like, yeah, okay. So this looks like it is working. So, all right, well, now that I know that it's working, uh, can you guys just let me know in the chat uh, how the audio sounds? Is it uh, too loud, too quiet? I'm gonna do my best to be able to see everything from where I am, so we'll see. I might have to move this a little closer. Bread, yeah, <laughs> Wajita. You were not the first one this time, Wajita. I might have to chop off my head so you guys can actually be able to see what I'm doing. Is this too loud, too quiet? Could you guys hear me uh, drinking the water down my gullet? It sounds crackly. Why does that always happen? <laughs> it's staticky. Oh, you know what? I think I might know what it is. For some reason, I think when I plug it into my camera, it sounds staticky. So I'm gonna to try to plug this microphone into my computer and we will see how that goes. Okay, so let's see. This, I have no idea what you guys are hearing right now. Does this sound okay? So I know you guys couldn't hear it a second ago. Um, but uh, yeah, I wish there was a way to be able to test stuff like this before the fact. Might want to move the camera up a little so we can see the top of your head. Yeah, so that's that's the tough thing with this. Is like I want I want you guys to be able to see what I'm cooking and baking, like putting stuff together, but I also want you guys to be able to see the top of my head. But I don't know, you can only, you gotta pick one or the other with this one, apparently. We can hear you, but it's low, okay. So, how, okay, that's not what I want. Okay, how about this? Does this sound okay? Although, I don't know if you're, let's see, what was coming from? This is it from uh, the so I have a microphone on my chest. Is this what it's coming from? Like, if I tap this, do you guys hear it? I think yeah, I think that's what it is. Does it sound a little bit better though? <sighs> Sounds good. Okay, getting better. All right, <laughs> zoom in a little. So you guys could either so if I do zoom in, you guys can basically see this, and you'll see like up to here on me. Or you can zoom into my face and not see anything, or it could be zoomed out and see everything. So you guys want to be zoomed in to like the food to see what I'm doing? No more static. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I can read like this, I guess, but it's just awkward. Yoski Woski, it's fine. Make the bread. Sounds fine to me. No zoom. How is life? We know what you look like, zoom into your face. No, keep it as is, you're good. Okay, so it seems like most people are saying no zoom in. So how many people, um, before I start, because I'm still waiting for a couple more people to come in, um, before I start, how many people 
are planning to bake along with me and how many people are just watching. And also, I really wish that I could see the comments from here, but I have to keep going in. Make the bread. <laughs> okay, everyone just wants me to make bread. So um, I'm just going to be completely honest. I haven't made this recipe in a long time, um, so I have not memorized the recipe, so I have it on my phone. So uh, first we're going to start with, um, I'm, uh, you know what, I'm going to start with the, the wet ingredients. So I'm going to, Kara's got these bananas that are just like super overripe. So I'm going to try these because I don't know what else we would eat them with. And I, I don't even know if they're overripe. I think they might have just gotten like smushed. I think my mom um, went, oh yeah, they're gross. Honestly, like when my mom uh, went grocery shopping the other day, she's the one who bought them and I think she wasn't really paying attention because she was in a hurry. And she put the bananas at the bottom of the shopping cart. So they got kind of destroyed. So I'm just gonna do three bananas. Well, it says three to four and we gotta get rid of these because like I said, I have no, oh, it actually says two to three. I don't even know my own recipe. Well, by my own, I mean uh, the Forks Over Knives recipe that I stole. Which, uh, if you guys are interested, I do have a link to the recipe book that I got it from in the description. And I do recommend it. It's pretty good. Okay, so we got the bananas. Uh, I'm going to do a half a cup of maple syrup. I'm just going to use a dry measuring cup because I don't think it really matters. You know what? Maybe I will use a wet measuring cup. We've got to use a wet measuring cup later on. Okay, we're gonna use a wet one. Oh my god, the maples. So this is what it's like when I'm not when I'm recording videos and I'm not um, I'm not doing a live stream. I like put something somewhere and then I forget about it. I'm like, where? <sighs> okay, here's a really embarrassing story. I got ketchup out the other day and I put it over there because I was making a veggie burger. And then I look in the fridge because I forgot I had it out. I was starting looking in the fridge for the ketchup and I was like, where's the ketchup? And I was like, we're not. There's no way we're out of ketchup. So then I go in the cupboard. I grab an extra ketchup, and then I turn around, and I see the ketchup's out. And now I have two open ketchups, and I just hope they don't go bad. Okay, so half a cup maple syrup. I'm just going to pour this in here, scrape her all out, and then I think I'm going to do the, let's do the applesauce next. One third cup of applesauce. And I'm thinking, so uh, with this recipe, it actually has to cook for like an hour at 350, so I was thinking we could do kind of like a QA and a hangout then, um, although in between I'll probably go over to the computer and catch up on some comments. Okay, so we got the applesauce in there. So we got three bananas, half a cup of applesauce, one third, oh my god, I'm going to mess you guys up so bad. Half a cup of maple syrup, one third cup of applesauce, one quarter cup of plant milk. Man, I would not be able to do a normal cooking show. <laughs> okay. So then for the plant milk, I'm using soy milk, it's my preferred, because I feel like it's just, just a little bit creamier than a lot of the other milks. And I like that. Okay, I don't even have, no, it's on the other side of the quarter cup thing. It's a lot easier when I'm making videos so I can edit out all my, all my mistakes. But now you guys get to see them all. I think that's pretty much all the wet ingredients. No, we got 1.5 teaspoons of vanilla. Got a super chat from Joseph Lincoln. Everybody tell Craig's mom he swore in a text conversation he had. Oh my God, Joseph. I told you not to tell anybody. Now everyone's going to tell my mom. And now I'm going to be grounded. Thanks a lot. Now I'm not going to be able to make any more videos of you. Not that I guess we could anyway, because, you know, it's more orange mean. Um, so this is something that I was thinking of recently. I talked about it with Chris, 
how many of you guys would be down to be watching me, Chris, and maybe some other YouTubers like maybe Joseph, um, if you know I can just volunteer him like that, um, uh, watching us play Risk? I think that would be really fun. I think you can download it on Steam for free. So I still got to look into that, but I think that'd be really fun because it's like a long game and something that like now that we all have a lot of time on our hands, we can all uh, we can all spend the time doing that. Uh, Mrs. Memphis sent a dollar ninety nine super chat and says, "Yum! Thank you. Thanks for the sticker and thanks for the super chat." Okay, one point five teaspoons. So I just hope that I don't mess this mess this up like the measurements up with uh like how I did with the uh, pancakes that I made. If you guys saw my birthday vlog. <laughs> All right, so now I think we're all done with the wet ingredients. And then I'm going to use my banana masherizer, and I'm going to go see what you guys are up to. Whoa, thanks for the super chat, Jane. Hey, Craig, when baking, correct measurements and temps are crucial. It is similar to chemistry, not like regular cooking when you can throw in a pinch of this and that. There are wet and dry measuring cups. Happy baking. All right, well, I did. I think I... For the most part, use the wet measuring cups with the wet stuff, right? What is Risk? So Risk um, is a game, it's a board game where a lot of friendships are lost. So, you know, me and Joseph and Chris may never speak again after that game. So I think it would be really fun. Uh, love it. Let's play Risk for 12 hours straight. Honestly, that's just like one game, basically. Um, right. I, I kind of want to like angle this so that you guys can see it. But at the same time, it took me a while to get this like to the perfect shot. So I kind of don't want to move it at the same time. <laughs> Measurements. Yeah, that's right, Wajita. Okay, let's see if anyone, what else people were saying before this. Now that you guys can just see my shoulder. Ketchup or catsup? <laughs> okay. Well, what about, I saw something about Sony a7 III. Do you still use the Sony a7 III? That's actually what I'm streaming on right now. Risk of global domination? Yeah, that's basically what it is. Okay, so... I'm streaming, yeah, like I said, with my Sony a7 III right now. So, yeah, I use it all the time. Um, so, I think this is what it's supposed to look like. So, that's how every cook or baker does their cooking shows, right? Talking about how they think this is how it's supposed to look. There's a lot of chunks in here. I don't know how to get rid of that, to be honest. All right, you, you guys want to comment and let me know how to get rid of chunks in your banana bread? Because I don't think there's supposed to be this many. Like, I'll show you guys. I don't know if there's supposed to be this many chunks. It, okay, it doesn't really look that appetizing right now, so, you know, warning. Maybe you can't see that well. Come on. Like, I haven't made banana bread in a while. I don't think there's supposed to be that many. Just do, <laughs> just do better. That's that's a good idea, Wajita. I'll do that. Make banana bread more. Use a fork. Oh, okay. Oh, do I own a whisk? Yeah, yeah, I own a whisk. Good thing. See, this is why I have you guys here. Okay. Oh, I do also have this thing. This is this is cool. So this is like a potato masher, and this is um, uh, looks like a Play-Doh maker. Like when you, you know, when you play Play-Doh <laughs> when you're a little kid. Like stuff oozes out, different shapes and stuff. I don't know if this would cut stuff up though. Like I might need to use a a fork or a knife or something, maybe. I feel like this would just like mix stuff together, you know? Maybe I should just call my mom and ask what she... <laughs> okay. Um, so I don't feel like that did much. I'm going to try a fork. I feel like this isn't really doing anything either. This is how I often cook and bake. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing, so then I'll try like a million different utensils, and before I knew it, half the kitchen silverware and stuff is all used up, and then I got to do a million dishes. Okay, I guess that's better. I'm just like kind of smushing it against the walls of the thing. I got this uh, Tupperware actually when I was in college. I think it was at like a thrift store for like a dollar or something. It's really great. It's like eight cups. Okay, so that's that's good enough, right? Uh, Mrs. Memphis, smash with fork, not stir. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to like smash it like uh, smash it as best I could against like the the walls of the big bowl. So. I think that hopefully should work. Okay, 
So I guess that's good. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I don't know why people watch me, to be honest. Um, so two cups of flour, and uh, like like uh, Jane, was, I think it was Jane, right? I'm gonna double check. Like Jane, yeah, like Jane said. Uh, Dry and wet ingredients. That's all I know. <laughs> all right. Hey, Craig, this is exactly what I needed to take. 25 bucks. Thank you so much, Minnie. Honestly, thank you guys all for the super. I was not expecting this many super chats, but thank you. Like, it just goes right back into the channel and just allows me to do what I do. So I really appreciate all the help from everyone who's given me a super chat so far. And just you guys watching. Like, this just, this is so cool. How many, I want to see how many people are watching right now. Um, but 200, over 200 people are watching me kind of fumble around the kitchen. So... Uh, that means a lot to me, guys. <laughs> okay, so we got two cups of flour, and I thought I got out a a bowl, but I didn't. So th this is, I guess, what it's like when I'm, like I said, when, <laughs> when I'm not editing my stuff down. It's always like, wait, I thought to put this here. Where'd it go? And now I gotta figure out how to. All right, I'll move all this stuff. I don't think I need it anymore. milk in the fridge. No lumps, Craig. <laughs> I learned from Craig fumble in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, let's see. I right, don't need any more vanilla. I yeah, see so you guys are seeing all the interesting stuff. <laughs> don't need any more bananas. Whoa, we got, whoa. Yeah, see these bananas are so bad that you try to pick them up by the stem and they just like fall apart. So we're gonna have to, I don't know, do something with them. Maybe make more banana bread. Um, and I do kind of like having this laugh mic on, so even when I go to the bananas, you guys can uh, still hear me. No lumps, no egg crack. <laughs> I'm team watch Craig foam around the kitchen. <laughs> Add one ripe onion. Oh, perfect. That's a secret ingredient, Wajita. Okay, so flour. Here. <laughs> okay. Where's this bowl? I think I can get rid of the wet ingredients because Jane said only use for wet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to listen to you, Jane. You probably know a little bit more than me. Okay. I'm going to do a cup. Oh, I already threw out this cup in here. Uh, just got a maple syrup or something in here. I don't know. There's something in here. Well, it looks like stuff that I already used, though. So it's just going to go into the same place, right? I hope there's a lot of bakers watching and cringing at this. Come on, why don't you just get out of the bag already? It's gonna embarrass me in front of all my friends. I know she said ingredient or the measurements matter, but um, I kind of messed that up. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Memphis, for the banana sticker in the super chat. All right, so then we have another bowl, and I, I guess I'll have to do just a little bit less than one cup because I kind of already messed it up. And I got another super chat from Miss Memphis. It's a banana that is uh, not rotten, I think. Okay. Let's see, how many cups are supposed to be in here? Two cups, okay, so this one I'll do a level two cups, okay? I'll even get a knife out. Oh, no, I have to level this over the bag, though. Oh, I also, I got a bowl out so I can put all the dry ingredients in here, and I start putting them in here. I feel like I'm even dumber when I do live streams because I'm focused on too many things at once. Well, I hope it's entertaining for you guys. Right. So, three quarters of a teaspoon for baking soda. And I hope this is kind of just like a show for uh, how not to cook or bake. Jane said another tip, freeze 
unpeeled bananas in a Ziploc bag when they're ready to bake, thaw, squeeze, and pull. Oh, so I do have these. Oh, these ones are Kara's. She has like ripped up bananas. And then I have ones that are not ripped up, so you can uh, you can tell the difference between our bananas. Oh, you know what? While I'm here, I'll just show you some cool stuff we got in our freezer. So here's the bananas. For I, I'm probably mostly going to use them for like smoothie bowls or um, milkshake type things or smoothies. Um, we got some vegetable pot stickers that are really, really good from uh, Wegmans. I don't know why it's so blurry. Focus. Okay. Um, and, oh, cool, cool. This is, I guess, not as awesome, but this is a huge thing of broccoli, so I won't run out anytime soon. And this is the other thing that I think looks really cool. I hope this is not way too loud for you guys. Um, I'll be done in a second. Vegetable dumplings. I cannot wait for this. I'm thinking one night when Kara and I are feeling really lazy. We just throw those on the stove and put some rice in the rice cooker and we got a good dinner. Okay, now that your earbuds are sufficiently wrecked. Uh, best cooking tutorial ever. How not to cook, basically. Uh, okay, back to baking. All right, yeah, yeah. I got a little uh, distracted by all the cool stuff in my freezer. Okay, so we have two cups of flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm thinking that, oh no, where to put my quarter teaspoon? Oh, it's right here. So I'm thinking three quarters, three of these goes three quarters. And I just need like the more you know thing to fly across the screen. So one, two, three. All right. Um, hmm. My, my mom, I think, said there was salt in the recipe when I uh, watched the video. So I got the recipe from my mom, um, who got this from Forks Over Knives. Maybe I should look up their recipe instead of just what I wrote down, because I think I forgot to write down some ingredients. So Forks Over Knives Banana Bread Recipe. I'm not coming up because it's probably because it's in their actual cookbook. So maybe I could just pull it up on on YouTube because I do have a really really old cringy video of this. Um, but I'm pretty sure my mom put a uh, salt in here, so that's what I'm thinking. Uh, thank you for the the salt uh, emoji or sticker, uh, Mrs. Memphis. Yeah, I hope that's the only uh, recipe I forgot. Oh no, this is such a cringy old video. Please don't go back and watch this, guys. All right, I'll you know what? I'll just show you guys uh, the video of this video. Won't focus though. So it's all the liquid ingredients. Oh, oh yeah. People, so people are saying, "Ring my mom." My mom would definitely not know because she has not memorized the recipe, um, and she—I know she doesn't have the recipe book at work because that's what she calls for. Okay. So Green Shelley says recipe calls for three quarters of a teaspoon. Do you do you have the recipe in front of you, or like, are you do you have the book? Oh jeez. Oh my god. Wow, you guys are hearing everything today. I'm pretty sure that's uh, um, a package I was going to get. I think I actually just got some pens from Staples, so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm just going to go see if, uh, I think you guys can still hear me, but I'm all the way at the other end of the house right now. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. So I don't need to answer that. But yeah, that doorbell always just scares the heck out of me. <sighs> okay. I have it, yes. Okay, so I'm going to trust you, Green Shelly, and tell me also if there's any other um, ingredients that I forgot. So three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to do that. So some other person on the internet is telling me the recipe because I messed up. 
I'm gonna have to do a lot more research next time I try this. But this is just, you know, it's kind of kind of figuring out how to do stuff, like having the proper recipe. Okay, so. One, two, three. All right. Needs more explosions. <laughs> Pearl bubble Sandra, I guess it's interesting times we're living in. Yeah, it's definitely interesting times. Scary mailman. Yeah, that really scared me. <laughs> Uh, is it weird with the mic on your chest? It was like you were still in the kitchen talking, but you left the room. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I kind of like that because, like, you know, if I face the other way or I walk into another room, you guys can still hear me and people can know that there's, like, if someone's just popping into a stream, I'm glad that they can know that I'm here and, <laughs> you know, they didn't uh, miss anything. All right. So let's see. I don't think there's too many other ingredients. Two cups of flour, three and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda, and apparently salt as well. Um, it looks like it's okay. It's into flax egg, so that's um, one tablespoon of flax, two tablespoons of water. Okay, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna preheat the oven right now, 350. Okay. And when I've I've done this before, and I don't ever like mix the water and the flax together. I just throw them in, and somehow it works. But I'm sure there's a lot of people at home going like, no, you idiot, don't do that. But welcome to my channel. Ah, water everywhere. Good thing my phone's waterproof. I'll be careful this time. All right, so I'm just throwing that into the dry ingredients because I'm just going to throw them in in a second anyway. So I'm going to grab a spatula as my dad calls them, spatula, with an R. All right, if anyone is baking along with me, can you let me know? Because I feel like nobody is at this point. <laughs> when I asked earlier anyway, nobody was. You know what, maybe that's okay. Maybe, maybe you don't need anyone to bake along with me. You guys can just watch me fumble through the kitchen. That'll be funny enough. All right, I guess that's good. All right, now I'll try to use my whisk again. I'm gonna see if what you guys have said. Do it. Oh my god, my Greg, Craig, what are you doing? I don't always make a flax egg either. Sometimes I just add flax and water in a bowl, and, and and it works for me too. Yeah. Thank you, Tony, for the super chat. And the thing says, "Yum." I hope it's yum. And thank you, <laughs> the Miss Lisa five 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 for the. Hmm, emoji. All right, so now we're going to try to whisk this all together. And once uh, once the uh, bread is in there, I'll be able to answer a lot more of the questions. But right now it's tough because they're going kind of fast and I'm far away from the computer. I'm baking along in spirit. Thank you, Dylan. Someone just said it's 5.30 a.m. Can't see exactly what it is. Where, where is Max? Working. <laughs> Oddly enough, he's at his job. And I'm at my job, technically. Although I feel like I've just been unemployed for the last couple of years because it doesn't really ever feel like I work. But it's just really fun. I really like doing this. I know some people have commented before on like this channel or the Hercules Candy channel. Like, please don't ever stop making videos. Like, oh, I, I have no plans on doing that anytime soon because it's just, I don't know, it's just so fun. Okay, so... Then we're going to, oh yeah, I already got these pecans out. I guess we could rough chop them first. I'm going to put some in there, and then I think I'm just going to put them on top of the bread, make it look fancy. I got a good set of knives. If you saw the video, it wasn't my birthday. It was the Easter video. My mom has the same set of knives, because basically what we did is like, we knew, Kara and I knew that we needed a set of knives. My parents knew that they needed a set of knives. Uh, so we each got each other a set of knives for, for Christmas. So I'm going to move this over here. And you guys can watch me cut some nuts. Very 
enthralling stuff. Okay, I'm not measuring these nuts, even though people told me that I got to measure, hack them. All right. All right, I think that's actually about good. You just need like a rough chop. Just gonna throw them in here. I think I might add a little more than that actually. I just like a lot of nuts. I'm just going to mix them all up. I have no idea if you guys can really see that. Probably not. Oh, this looks good, though. Okay. I think that's all I got to do. And then I'll spray this real quick. He is working. <laughs> Pecan or pecan? I th I say pecan. Great nice ghost crack. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's sarcasm. Pecan. Well, yeah, what do you guys say? You guys, you guys write what you say. Yeah, okay. I say exactly what you say, Dolores. Pecan. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to use spatula. Get as much off of here as I can. I don't think I'll need the whisk anymore. Oh, geez. I heard something hit the floor. Hey, maybe you guys can watch me uh, clean up, too. You guys want to watch me clean up the kitchen afterwards? <laughs> I, I feel like people, more people than you would think, like watching people clean stuff up. It's surprising. This does smell very bananas. Oh, you know what? Chocolate chips would have been good in this. Damn it. I mean, I could add them to the top, I guess, right? I was going to add uh, pecans to the top, but I could add, or sorry, pecans. But uh, I could always add chocolate chips instead, right? You guys vote chocolate chips on top? You guys can just, just write chocolate chips in the chat if you... Uh, if you want to see them, okay. I'll just lick some of this. Mmm, that's good. Yes. <laughs> cinnamon would be good. Oh, yeah, cinnamon will be good. Pumpkin spice, too. Oh, okay. It's going to be very particular about where I throw these in. I just want to have like, a huge clump of chocolate. Not that many people complain about that. So I'm going to try to evenly disperse it. You have to like kind of throw them in so they can almost get like sunk in a little bit. You know, I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Well, I feel like I would have to go like this and then it would get all tilty wilty. So I'm just going to get it. Hold on. We're not there yet. Come down, oven. This oven is actually like pretty similar to my parents' oven. Uh, my parents' oven has like a big middle burner. It's like a really long one that's made like for putting your pancake griddle and stuff on there. We just have a little wimpy one in the middle, but it's a good oven though. I like it. I like this whole apartment. Like I think a lot of when I first moved in here, a lot of people were like, <coughs> a lot of people were commenting like, oh, you see, that YouTube money's paying off. But then I think if you guys saw how little I paid for this apartment, like you'd probably be shocked because real estate in Syracuse, New York, is like really, really cheap. Or this is a lot of chocolate chips, though, but whatever. Okay. 
I'm just trying to cover up all the little bare spots with more chocolate chips. I'll show you guys in a second. All right. Well, keep seeing bare spots. <laughs> it's basically just going to be like chocolate chip bread. But, you know, no complaints. No complaints here. I don't think Carol will complain when she comes home to this. All right. Now I think it's good. So, again, I don't want to tilt it too much, but it's kind of like what it looks like. So I'm going to throw this in the oven, and I'm going to see if I can uh, okay, set this time around for one hour, and then I'll talk to you guys in a second. I've got to concentrate. I don't hold on. Oh, oh. I don't even know how to use my alarm. There we go. All right. One hour. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, and then I'll bring you guys out into the dining room, and I'll answer some questions. Or maybe I'll just keep you guys here. It might be easiest to just do that. Just stand here awkwardly answering questions. So you got one hour in order to find out if I made this properly. Wait, you didn't add the onion. Oh! One hour. Yeah, I thought it was a lot, too. One hour for cooking banana bread, but that's what the recipe says. Um, it's at 350, which is pretty low, which um, I think I made some bread the other day. It was like four, maybe it was like 425 or something like that. Now I'll move this a lot closer so I can actually see what you guys are saying. No kitchen sink in the bread. <laughs> you can bring in a chair. Okay, okay, yeah, that's true. 350 as well? Yeah. <laughs> 350 Fahrenheit. I don't know if you're thinking Celsius. All right. Get a clothespin. I don't know where I put this one, so I'm just going to grab a new one. I'm sure I'll find the clothespin as I'm cleaning up. Do you deliver? <laughs> well, we'll see how it comes out before you're asking if I deliver. Kind of depends on your oven. You might be able to pull it out sooner than an hour. I'm going to try for an hour, though. Uh, will you bring the loaf to Hertz? That would be very difficult to uh, live stream since I would need Wi-Fi, and I'd have to drive to Hercules to do that. <laughs> and also move my... My laptop and computer. <laughs> Any plans for Mother's Day? Not yet, because that's like two weeks away. So I don't plan stuff like that um, too far in advance. Plus, um, it's been a tradition in our family, at least, which I think other people will probably think is weird. But in our family, the tradition, especially growing up, was just leave the parent alone on, on Mother's Day or Father's Day. Um, on Mother's Day, our dad would just take us to the park, and my mom would just have quiet time for like the first time in months. Um, and then the same thing for, you know what, now I, I feel like I can... Uh, Raise this up a little bit. Um, yeah, so then my mom would have quiet time for like the first time in months. And then same thing for like my dad. Uh, my mom is just like, you know, just just take the kids out of the house. I just, you just need some quiet time, okay? Um, so maybe I'll just like make my mom some bread and drop it off and then just leave her the heck alone for the rest of the day. So I think it's going to be a Sunday, which is um, going to be a day off for her. I'm just going to even this out. Can you zoom in a little bit? Mine takes 55 minutes. Okay. You don't have to live stream it. Uh, what's your thoughts on Star Solution? So I read the Star Solution. I actually thought it was a really good book. Um, my my mom has it though. Uh, I read it, you know, when I when I lived there. But yeah, it's a good book, I think. I want to buy my mom a vegan cake, but I don't know how to bake. Um, so uh, if you if you don't know how to bake, but you want to get your mom a vegan cake, if, and maybe you don't want to purchase one, um, I actually have a couple of videos on um, YouTube, or I think just one video, where Kara and I veganized a box cake. Um, so you just basically add a flax egg instead of a normal egg. You add some soy milk or almond milk instead of um, dairy milk, uh, just stuff like that. It's actually really easy to do. Oh, hold on, my... Uh... My microphone is in my, going into my shirt. How embarrassing. Hopefully I didn't uh, ruin your guys' ears. Next recipe should be braided garlic bread. I was actually thinking, um, so I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that, uh, but I was also thinking what if I did homemade pretzels, like soft pretzels. That could probably be pretty good. I just veganized a box cake. Oh, cool. Small world. 
Um, and I'm sure there's other uh, uh, cake recipe, like vegan cake recipes on YouTube that you could check out, or just um, blogs or something. There's a bunch of uh, recipes you can find. Jane, Craig, a lot of people are asking if you greased your pan. Yeah, I did. I uh, I sprayed. Pretzels are pretty nice. Yeah, I like pretzels. Yes. Yeah. Oh, pretzels. Okay, it looks like a lot of people are saying pretzels. The only thing is, I don't have like the the really uh, big like coarse salt that you have. They would need to get for pretzel salt. Um, I do have like normal salt, and I'm I'm sure people would be fine with that if I like were to surprise people at Hercules with them. Um, but it would be kind of cool to have like the big salt, especially for thumbnail. Although my parents actually might have that. I don't know. I'll I'll talk to them about it. <laughs> I'll have to talk to them about it, but not tell them what I need it for if I do want to surprise them with it. No salt. No, do it. If you're gonna make pretzels, you gotta do it with salt. <laughs> you can't do no salt pretzels. That's just like. I don't know. It's like no sugar cookies. Like what? Who wants that? Good surprise idea. Yeah, I, I was thinking about pretzels the other day. I was like, mm, soft pretzels would be good. And I looked it up and it didn't actually look too difficult. Um, so then I might try that. No salt, Craig. No, I'm I'm definitely salt, Craig. I put uh, there's only what three quarters of a teaspoon salt in in here. So anyway, maybe I should uh, clean up in between answering questions from you guys. I just have some stuff I gotta put away. Really, I'm not gonna probably do any dishes. What are sweet pretzels? Oh, oh, so you know the people who uh, are big fans of The Office know about Pretzel Day and the works. Um, I've never had a sweet pretzel though. Unsalted, unsalted, unsalted. Ew, no. Oh, unsalted pretzels. No, you you can make unsalted pretzels. I'll. You know what? Tell you what. I can make the normal salted pretzels, and you can just not add, and not add any salt. LOL Stanley from the office. But on pretzel day, oh, I like pretzel day. <laughs> Oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. That'd be good. But maybe without the oatmeal. <laughs> I like them with cinnamon and sugar, with frosting on the side. Oh, okay. That sounds kind of like a churro at that point. Like, you might as well get a churro. <laughs> uh, Auntie Anne's going to make a vegan sweet pretzel. Uh, but you have to make sure to ask for no butter. Okay. I think I have an Auntie Anne's at the uh, um, the mall near me. But not vegan. Sweet pretzels from Wawa. Oh, okay. Oh, man. This microphone keeps uh, going into my shirt. So I might just clip it to the outside of my shirt. Like, um, like that. Oh. Hopefully this is the um, ears of people who are watching at home. Is that is that better? You need a remote force for a wrist. Three players is not enough. Yeah, so I don't know exactly um, who we would ask to play. It was just I've just been brainstorming. I was just thinking of uh, that. So yeah, if you guys want to um, help me. So, okay, there's a couple ideas I wanted to do. So I was thinking of doing like a live stream risk with like a bunch of other YouTubers, or some of you guys too. I think that'd be fun. Uh, especially if we got like a Discord so we could like talk to the viewers too. So like everyone was, uh, um, oh, someone said move the mic up. Okay. Is it too quiet? Okay. Because I would want to be able to talk to everybody who's playing. Um, okay, so someone said put the mic back where it was. Does everyone think that? Sound up? Okay. I'm just going to put the mic back where it was. I'll just leave it on the outside, like that. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. So anyway, I was thinking risk live stream and also another cooking or baking uh, live stream. Um, so are there any recipes that you guys would want to hear or want to hear? <laughs> any recipes that you guys would want to see? Um, nine egg cream. Uh, so I did. Uh, I I wanted to do banana bread because I felt like it's like it's pretty simple. Um, it's something I can do in like a relatively short amount of time. Um, it's not like baking bread where you got to wait for it to rise for like two hours and then you knead it a little bit and it rise for another 90 minutes. Um, so it's not going to be like an all day thing. It's uh, something I can just put together. I think it took me like maybe 20 minutes to put together and it's cooking for like an hour. So it's not too long. Um, and I want it to be some very accessible ingredients that people can really um, get this at, during these times because right now it's... Um, it's hard to get a lot of things. Um, I have Discord, a mic, and earphones. Okay. So maybe we'll uh, hit you up, Thaddeus. His full name is Craig Stipper Von Eggington. Von Eggen. Sorry. <laughs> Do 
do an edit with me live stream. Okay, so I, I do edit with me live streams like for um, for thumbnails, but I can guarantee you guys that you may think that you want to see me edit my videos, but you absolutely do not. Because when I edit my videos, I, I do a lot of things that are just like very frame by frame. So like if I'm doing an effect and I think it's like one frame too far, I'll like watch that clip over and over and over and over. And like, see, there's a funny part in the video. It's no longer funny to me. And it probably wouldn't be funny to you guys anymore either. Um, and I, I think it would also kind of like ruin the surprise of the videos. Um, so I, I won't ever do like an edit with me um, for a like a video, but for thumbnails I do those all the time. So I don't think that will like ruin the video. Do you still have a part-time job? No, I do not. Um, I just do this and the Hercules Candy channel. And that's it. And actually Dylan, who is um, moderating right now, is my full-time employee. I have one full-time employee. And we even got like a payroll system set up and everything. It's like, it's legit. I got an LLC. I'm technically the owner of my own media corporation. Well, media corporation is an LLC. Company? So I could say that I own my own media company or I could just say I'm a YouTuber. Depends how prestigious I want to sound. <laughs> All right, well, okay. So most of the time when people ask what my job is, I usually just say I make videos and I hope that they just stop asking questions because I don't know, sometimes I feel weird telling people I'm a YouTuber. And also sometimes I don't want, are, are you the CEO? Yes, I'm the CEO. Um, sometimes I don't want people to find me on YouTube. Like it's just like someone that I'm uh, talking to in like, I don't know, my normal day-to-day -day life. And I'm just like, oh, I'm not the biggest fan of this person. This person is kind of annoying. I don't want them to find me on, on YouTube. <laughs> and I would, I'll uh, try to avoid telling them. Media CEO of Hercules. <laughs> LOL, you're a YouTuber. He pays me in bananas. Yeah, and those are good bananas, Dylan. You're a content creator. <laughs> I feel like a content creator just like, I don't know, has like a weird sound to it. Uh, you have an employee? Yeah, Dylan, Dylan. He's my employee. Um, so he basically, so Dylan pretty much just edits the videos for Hercules. He'll come in and shoot if uh, I can't come in for some reason for Hercules. Um, after this is all over, hopefully he will be able to be my camera person for my own channel here. Uh, and also, it, 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 it well, whatever. Um, if there's any time that I'm just like, Dylan, I need a second opinion on this, because I think Dylan's a good editor. I'm just going to move this up so you can top my head. Um, I, if I need like a second opinion on, like, is this funny? Is this entertaining? Is this, does this make sense? What kind of transition will you do? Like. Um, I had him watch my birthday video. Uh, I actually cut out a couple minutes because he was like, no, I think this is a little bit redundant here. So I was like, okay. So um, it is nice to be able to just have someone that you can just call up whenever and they, you don't have to worry about them working because they work for you. So, <laughs> so they got to drop everything they're doing and review your video with you. Who the heck is Dylan? Jealous Dylan. No, Dylan, Dylan's at his house. This stream is scary. Lots of scary noises. Yeah. So I I think that like one of the water like this water bottle down here. It's a metal water bottle. I think that shifted or something. And um, then there was the uh, the UPS guy earlier. I'm pretty sure he dropped off my pens I got from Staples. Like, have you guys? Okay. Have you guys ever gotten like really nice pens? And like, it's just like really nice to write with like nice pen. Like, you're just more likely to write. I think because I it's just I don't know. It's just like if you get a pen, it just like glides along the paper. Like, it's just so satisfying. And I, I also, okay, so I have a tendency, maybe I should just show you guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab my pens that I like. And they're like, it's like six bucks, I think, for five pens. They're really nice, as, you know, as far as pens go. All right, and I basically just pulled a Pac-Man, so I'm going to come out over here. Um, but, yeah, these are by a company called True Red. Um, it's just, it's a gel pen, so it's not a ballpoint. Because um, I guess gel, I guess, uh, maybe someone knows more about pens can tell me the difference. But uh, it's a gel pen, and it's, um, it's a quick-drying one. I got a quick-drying one because I have a tendency. So the way I write is I hold, I hold it with every finger except for my pinky, and I just write like this, and I literally just drag my hand across the page. So when I was in high school and college, I would just end up with, like, graphite just, like, on these two fingers because I was just dragging it across. And then, like, all my pages would just be, like, gray because I was just, like, smearing everything. So I got this quick drying gel pen because then I can drag my pen across and it, my pages don't get all ruined. So, and I pretty much just, um, I, I pretty much just use this for like journaling. Like, um, I think it's, uh, it's been really nice to journal. I made that a habit like 
probably a year ago. Um, I'll just kind of journal what I did throughout the day, and I feel like it kind of like holds you responsible and like holds you accountable for like actually doing stuff because I'll have to write down like I did nothing today. I was lazy, um, and you know I think it's fine to have those days if like you've been working really hard and you deserve your day off. But if you don't, then you're gonna have to write down that you were lazy and did nothing when you should have been working. Um, so there's that, and then also in times like this, like it is really nice I think to have like a written record. So then like. 20 years from now, you can go back and look at what you did and like what your your thoughts were on uh, like a time like this that is just going to be in the history books. And it's weird to think that we're in that right now. So if you can have any way of documenting that, whether it's like photos, videos, written stuff, like it's, I think that in the future, you'll probably thank yourself. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm going to get back to the comments now that you guys have written a lot of stuff about pens. Who the heck is done? <laughs> Pens. Yeah, I like gel pens. Left-handed, all pens. <laughs> Love pens into calligraphy. Oh, cool. I just use a blue pencil to sketch now to avoid that problem. Left to right is worse for you. Left to right. What's the name of the pen? Um, the company is called True Red. T R U space R E D. Can't read actually. See that or not? But I just got it from uh, Staples. Yeah, it's really nice. Just glides across the paper, like I said. Okay, but seriously, Craig, can you turn it up? Uh, I can't turn anything up. Um, does the sound okay? Because I've had a couple people say that they want um, the sound up. Um, I could turn it up, but I just I would need uh, enough people saying that because I. I can only, I have, the way this works on this um, computer, I have the program set up so it's as loud as possible. Um, and then, okay, so the same person is saying turn it up. So I need to hear other people saying that they want to turn it up. Because if only one person is saying that, then it's, it's probably just your volume. And I don't want to, it's a little low. When, okay, so I'm going to turn it up on here. Uh, is this it? Maybe it's on here? No, that's not it. This is it. Okay, so now it should be louder. So you guys can tell me if this is too loud or if this is okay. The, the sound is louder when I stand up straight. Okay, so maybe I guess, well, it's, it's tough because I, I want to be able to see what you guys say. You can barely hear me when it's up all the way. Perfect, okay, that's way better. Okay, all right, cool. I hope your banana bread doesn't burn. Yeah, I hope so too. So it's got 43 minutes. It's already been 17 minutes. Wow, you guys are keeping me entertained. Um, okay, so anyway, um, what we were talking about before, before I got distracted by pens, um, is there any sort of recipe that you guys would think would be good for like a bake-along or cook-along type thing? Um, especially, like I said, it's got to be something that doesn't take forever, like maybe I'd say three hours tops as far as like um, cooking it, like putting it together, sticking it in the oven or on the stove top, whatever, and then uh, trying it. Although I hope I'll be able to try this because I don't know how long it's going to have to cool. Um, Cookies. Oh, okay. Cookies, I think would be good. Um, and I also want it to be something that is, has like very accessible ingredients. That I think a lot of people would have. So that's why I picked banana bread. And I was like, you know what? There's probably some people who stocked up on their, on their stocked up on their bananas and need to get rid of them, or the people who probably have frozen bananas that they could get rid of. Blueberry muffins. That sounds really good too, actually. Carrot cake with coconut flakes. Ooh. Well, I mean, you guys saw how uh, how awful I am with banana bread, so. I don't know if I can go do that just yet. So with the, the soft pretzels, I was thinking of doing a um, actual recipe video for that. And there's, especially if it's something that's a little bit more difficult, I would definitely not want to do a live stream because there's so many moving parts with doing a live stream versus doing a video that would just be kind of too much to handle. It's like, uh, I, I know none of you guys have probably ever, well, some of you guys have probably done live streams, but uh, if you've ever done a live stream, especially if there's like 200-ish people watching, like it's just... It's very draining. Like I, I feel fine during it, but then like when I press stop streaming at the end, I'm just like, oh, because <laughs> I just like I had to be like on like mentally for like the past like two or three hours, and it's it can just be kind of tough. So, um, yeah. So that's that about that. What about dinner entrees? So dinner entrees sounds good. I think that'd be good. Oh, maybe pizza. I could actually whip up a pizza not that long, especially like the, just the crust too. So the recipe that I do, um, you you just like mix all the stuff together. And then you let it rise for 10 minutes 
and then you need it again, let it rise for another 10 minutes, and then you can just start doing everything. So pizza would actually be kind of fun. Make a rainbow cake. Grilled sandwich. Ooh, do grilled cheese. That'd be easy. <laughs> Pizza sounds fun. Tofu tacos. Ooh, okay. That sounds good. We do have some tofu we could get rid of. A lot of people are saying pizza. <sighs> Pita bread. Oh, okay. Shrimp dip. Cat? <laughs> no, I don't have a cat. Panini. Wow, you guys are throwing off really good recipes. Okay, so I do have... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Roasted red peppers. I really like having roasted red peppers in sandwiches, like vegetable sandwiches. Oh my God, it's so good. Have you ever had a Carvel cake? Like a vegan version of it. Yeah, I used, I had Carvel cakes like, uh, you know, before I was vegan. Hummus. Oh, okay. Um, you know, maybe I could do make a recipe book, Craig. Um, so I'll, pretty much all the recipes that I use are from other people. So I don't think that they would appreciate me stealing from other people. That's what I do. Cause like, I don't, I honestly don't really spend that much time in the kitchen. Um, I don't really have that much of an interest in cooking or baking. Um, I kind of just do it for necessity because I need to eat. Um, and also I make these videos. So that's why I'm pretty awful at cooking is because I would just rather be doing other things. <laughs> and I think people like watching me be really bad in the kitchen. So it all works out. Um, but yeah, so as far as hummus goes, I was thinking like, what if uh, what if I did a live stream with someone like Vegan Bodega Cat who actually knows how to make good hummus and then could like walk me through making hummus. It'd be kind of like a collab. Like you guys could like ask her questions too and she could answer live. Um, I think that'd be kind of fun. Oh yeah, so I was thinking about doing the, the carrot bacon thing. Uh, Dylan sent me a TikTok of that. Okay, I got to stand up so you guys can hear me. So, uh, but yeah, Dylan sent me a TikTok of uh, some lady who made some carrot bacon. And I've been meaning to do a video of that. I've been forgetting. So thank you. And it's only been a couple days that Dylan showed it to me, though. So it looks like people like the idea of the hummus. You should do a hummus cook-off with the vegan zombie, see who makes the best hummus. The only thing is, we wouldn't be able to uh, taste test them, like, each other's anytime soon. Um, you know, because the whole schmorange mean. Falafels with hummus, that would go well together. But yeah, so maybe I'll have to text her back about that or something. Um, so yeah, so I could do... Um, a hummus live stream with Rebecca. Um, I could do uh, like a risk live stream with um, some vegan YouTubers and some of you guys, uh, hopefully. Um, and those are the two that I'm thinking of right now. I think those sound really good. Um, and then maybe like a pizza stream sometime. What do you What do you guys think of doing like a weekly live stream like every I don't know Thursday or something like that? Or well, I think Kara sometimes has a day off on Thursday, so I'd want to do a day when I just had the house myself because. If Kara's got her day off, I want her to be able to like relax and not be like, oh, I can't come in the kitchen because someone's doing a live stream. Um, and like, although I would love to have her in the kitchen with me, I know she doesn't always want to be on camera. So that's why I'm saying that she would want to not be in the kitchen. What about Friday? Okay, Fridays or Saturdays. <laughs> okay, so I think Fridays sound good because I think Kara, al so Kara alternates between having Thursdays off and Saturdays off. So I, that's what I'm trying to think of like not doing either of those days. Make a daily live stream. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's a lot of time and effort. Um, and I, I'm still trying to do the Hercules Candy channel. And I'm still trying to make videos for, for this. So it's, uh, it's a lot more effort than it sounds like. <laughs> and I don't have 36 hours in a day. I wish. Whenever. I'll tune in. I ain't doing nothing. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people like that right now who are like, if you're, if you're out of work or if you're out of school, um, even if hourly live stream, probably let's do one every minute. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I think that a lot of people just have a lot more time in their hands right now. So I think a lot of people, no matter what time, would be able to watch. Perfect. Great idea. Vegan cooking with Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday don't work for me. Yeah, so I'm not going to be doing Thursdays anyway. Do you shop for food um, often in this weird time? I try not to um, very often. And I try to go very early in the day, like right when the store opens. Um, and last time I uh, brought a pair of gloves and... Um, a mask, and I also um, brought a paper list so I didn't have to touch my phone. Um, 
Try to get right. Too much. Hmm? Yo, the vegan zombie's going live right now. He's competing with you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Craig, Todd B from Florida, love to cook here and would do tofu stuffed, oh, sto tofu stuffed peppers, that sounds good. Anything stuffed peppers sounds good. Toilet life. <laughs> Spell the tea on Chris, expose Chris. So I don't know if you guys know this, but Chris is a vampire. So, you know, maybe, actually, maybe I should pull up Chris's live stream. We could watch his live stream while we're watching my live stream, live stream section. Cause I, I don't know if he's going live or he is live. Is he going live on The Vegan Zombie or his second channel? He's live. What the heck? Oh, so yeah, he's live with uh, The Vegan Foot Soldier. So, uh, otherwise, probably on the other podcast we have. Uh, yeah. He's, uh... So yeah, I, I did a live stream actually uh, like that with Chris not too long ago. Um, but yeah, we were talking about doing that again sometime soon because... There's only so many things you can do, you know, during the time like this. <laughs> Make a quiche. Oh, okay. I made a quiche, actually. Um, I tried it with, like, chickpea. Um, like a chickpea. Like a, it was a chickpea-based one. I, used, I had to use, like, a tablespoon of black salt to, in order to actually be able to taste it. And um, that's a lot of salt. It didn't really taste like there's a whole lot of salt in it, though. But I knew. Have you met Happy Healthy Vegan? Yeah, I met them. Um, I met uh, Happy Healthy Vegan at Expo West. It's fun. So I'm going to go put my pen back. But uh, yeah, I met Happy Healthy Vegan. We went to a restaurant called All Lock. I think it was called. Uh, it's like a vegan seafood restaurant. It's at the end of my um, my vlog, one of my vlogs that I did. I think I only did one vlog when I was at... Um, uh, Expo West, but Chris, Chris has a video of that too. I hope you'll still be here in an hour. I probably will, because it's got 33 minutes left for the banana bread to bake. Let's see your dad make beer. <laughs> Please send bread. Are you going to upload this live stream and I can be watching it? Right yeah, I'll, I'll probably have it just as like a video later on. Please send bread. Dylan, I can pay you in bread if you want. Do you have a recipe for split pea soup? I do not. Actually, you know what? You reminded me that I should um, update the the live stream info because I need to add that is three quarter teaspoon of salt because I did not add that. And I should actually just update the whole video too because I uh, I have a video like I, like I showed you guys earlier. I have a video of me making this recipe, and I do not have salt in it, so I hope I have not steered people in the wrong direction for too long. Is it pay week? <laughs> huh. um, yeah, I, I could maybe see if I could get a video of uh, my dad making beer. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe like sometime later this summer. I don't know if we'd want to do it anytime soon because I think now when he has his time off, he wants to like have time off and not be in like a video, you know, just have some me time. <laughs> everyone needs a little bit of me time. He ships me barrels of bananas once every blue moon of the harvest. Yeah. And you should be grateful, Dylan. There's a video of Steve making beer. Yeah, uh, I forgot. I think he made like an IPA or something like that. Um, I don't know what his beer setup is right now, though. I don't know if he's like still doing the basement or the first floor or what. Well, I guess you'd have to be doing a little bit in the basement because I think you'd have to use the, uh, uh, the candy stove, basically, for cooking part of it. That's more than I get paid. <laughs> Wait, you guys are getting paid? 
I love those memes. I just want a video of Steve existing. Yeah, I swear I wiped this off and it's like still got stuff on it. Um, yeah, so it seems like a lot of people really liked uh, my dad playing guitar in the last video. Um, and I know people said that they want to see uh, my dad playing guitar in like future videos, but I don't, I don't know how we just like squeeze that in. We just like randomly just cut in a clip of my dad playing guitar or like have it at the end of a video or what? Um, and he, he doesn't make his own songs, so he just uh, he just learns songs. He's really good at it though. Um, but I like because I know some people would probably request that they hear like a steep original, but he doesn't have any. Okay, so hopefully, I just want this to like feel smooth and like no crumbs or anything. You know, I feel like I did it. I'm working, <laughs> live chatting with customers at the moment. Oh, what do you, what uh, company do you work for, Melissa? What's in the rooms that the shop used to be in? Pretty much nothing. Um, i trying to think, I think my mom's office is now like a spare bedroom for like when my older sister and her husband come to visit. Um, does he sing too? No, nope, my dad did not sing. And <laughs> yeah, he's very strict about his no singing policy. You just have to film it. We like you guys for you. <laughs> I can't stay. All right, Melissa. I'll see you later. It's a baby company, okay? Where you make you make babies? Okay, that kind of came out dirtier than I expected. <laughs> uh, he could write a song about her good candy, maybe. Yeah, so that that's the thing though. My dad doesn't write songs. He just um, I'm sure he could write songs, um, but I don't know if he has much interest in it. He likes learning songs that he really likes. Does mom do anything? No, my mom does not do anything musical. She likes to read a lot. Um, she also likes swimming and running, swimming, running, reading, biking, not biking, uh, run. Why did I say biking? Baking? Yeah, that's what I meant. I don't know. She cooks when she has a day off. I think she just likes to have a lot of food in the house more so than she likes cooking. <laughs> but does he play bass? He does not. Just, uh, he, so my dad has, I think I like two or three electric six string guitars and i think he has one 12 string acoustic guitar terry can terry can do audiobooks she'll she'll listen to an audiobook um i think she she pretty much just likes to um read though like read a book instead of like listening to it uh, this feels like decently dry i could probably actually start moving it back and then putting some more stuff away a hercules jingle and sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. My mom's my mom's other hobby is sarcasm. Teaching sarcasm to other people. Sarcasm as a second language, you know, for the people who aren't fluent. I can't stand when banana bread doesn't have nuts. Uh, they just belong. Yeah, so there's pecans in this one and chocolate chips on top. Okay. Actually, so, um, I've, yeah, you guys have definitely seen this. Um, this is like a granite countertop um microwave cart it's actually it's really nice but we got it for like 60 dollars at aldi it was a steal it was very difficult to put together didn't make very much sense and the instructions were awful so maybe that's why it was only 60 bucks but once we got it together it's pretty good all right got another 20 Six minutes and 55 seconds. I've heard them sing happy birthday. Voices of angels. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. Um, I wonder if I should have uh, moved this uh, camera and stuff out to the other room. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Now, I can, now you guys can see me while I'm reading stuff. Need a flip up table. <laughs> Greetings from Iverness, Scotland. Scotland. Show us your yoga moves. The ones I was doing the other day. So I'll have to go like this. So this is the first move you, you, you learn in any yoga class. 
and you have to yell it when you do it. You go, yoga kick. And then there's also yoga punch. And then yoga throat rip. But it doesn't work if you don't if you don't yell it though. So like I said, those are the three ones that you learn. And then if I remember correctly, I think this one is warrior one, warrior two. And then the one I was really struggling with the other day is warrior three, something like that. I think it was like this or like that. I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not good at yoga. I just do it. Do you play any instruments? So I, I did uh, learn how to play guitar. My dad taught me how to play guitar when I was growing up. And I just got bored of it because I think music's not really for me. Um, I don't even listen to music that much. Um, I mostly listen to like podcasts. Um, sometimes I listen to music, um, but not too often. Great moves. Yeah. No one messed with me. I know yoga. Greetings from South Africa. Greetings from Syracuse, New York. No music, Craig. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm against it. Just, um, I guess I kind of like using my time productively. N not, okay. That, that sounds really bad. But like, um, I guess when I'm driving, I want to like almost get like two things done at once. Like I get to a place and I learn something or I get to a place and I guess I would be more entertained by listening to something funny. Like I'd be, I'd be more likely to listen to like stand up comedy than a song, which I'm not saying I don't listen to songs when I drive, but, um, yeah, I'd like to either learn something from a podcast or just be entertained. What kind of music do you listen to when you do listen to it? Um, I would say Lana Del Rey is my favorite artist. And then I really like Queen a lot. Um, I've been listening to also, uh, there's a trending TikTok songs of 2020. That's a pretty good playlist. I like that too. What's wrong with eggs, Craig? They come from an animal. What the heck? I'm vegan. Okay, I can't get out of this one. Would you have any advice for a fellow vegan who's thinking of doing YouTube for years, but imposter syndrome keeps getting in the way? Uh, if you're comfy answering, thanks for the channel. So I guess I'll start answering and then you guys, you, then you can get more specific about what you mean about um, imposter syndrome. So I think that you should start a YouTube channel if you like making videos. If you don't like making videos, you're probably not gonna wanna do it. Um, I didn't know that I liked making videos until I started making them. I was like, oh, this is actually pretty fun. Like I like the creative outlet of, of making videos. Um, like I like editing, it's fun. Um, so if you like that, then I think that it would be good for you. I think you'd like that. Um, if not, then maybe if you like taking photos, then like Instagram would be good for you. Um, if you like writing, maybe like blogs would be good for you. Um, yeah, so I just say just do whatever is fun for you because uh, whether you're good at it or not, it's, it's gonna be fun for you. So that's I think that's why like the first couple of years, I didn't get any traction on YouTube, like none, because I was bad at it. <laughs> but it didn't matter because I was having fun and I was learning. So it didn't really matter that I wasn't having success, you know? And I think it's gotta be something like that, uh, no matter what you're doing, um, you just have to like what you're doing because then if you don't have success, you're still gonna just keep doing it. And then eventually, like, just with the quantity of the videos that you make, you're gonna get better at it. Like, I feel like I didn't start get getting good at editing until I made about 300 videos. I think around the 300th video, somewhere around there, I started to make a little bit more gems than I did garbage because in the beginning it was just like garbage, 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 garbage gem, garbage, 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 garbage. And then after a while it's garbage, gem, garbage, gem, garbage, gem, you know, but now I, I feel like I'm, I'm better at making less garbage stuff. Love making the videos, editing, I'm learning. Oh, cool. What program do you use, Todd? I, I guess the feeling that there are already enough vegan YouTubers and I wouldn't have anything new to add. I'm an audio engineer by trade, so I'm intimidated by video. So if, if you are intimidated by video, I don't think that's a reason not to do it. I think, you know, you could learn how to do that. Um, you do have some uh, editing knowledge uh, and your videos would probably sound really good, which actually matters a lot more than how things look. Um, and I don't think you would have to necessarily worry about the fact that there's already a lot of vegan YouTubers and you wouldn't have anything new to add because you have your personality. Like I, I don't really like teach anything on my channel. I just show people that anybody can be vegan. Cause like if I can do it, then you can definitely do it. Cause like, as you guys saw in this video, like I don't really know how to cook or bake. I just sort of fumble around and like somehow things end up working out. Cause cooking, baking is like 
you know, as long as you're not doing anything ridiculously difficult, like trying to make a tiramisu or something like that, usually like it's not that hard. It's not as hard as you think. And you're probably not going to mess up too bad. And even if you do, it's probably still going to be edible. Like there's definitely been some times when I've messed stuff up in the kitchen, but you can still eat it. Um, and I guess kind of like the same thing with YouTube, like you can make videos that are not that bad and post them. And then like, you can look back at it like six months later, like, oh, well, I'm glad I learned how to do this thing, or I didn't do that transition, or this thing was overused, or like, you know, whatever. Um, I think if you're not able to look back at old work and cringe, then you probably haven't uh, moved forward too much. So anyway, thank you for coming to my, my other TED Talk. Use, I use Movavi. I, I think I, ha I have Movavi for a little bit. I think I use it for like um, uh, screen recording though. Your budget grocery shopping and meals the first video I watched. Really cool. Thanks. Yeah, I think a lot of people found me from those videos because they were like, they were pretty popular. Um, but I really hated making them. Um, I know the first time I, like every time I did, I think it got a little bit better because the first time I did it, I was so paranoid that I would just run out of food in general that I just bought like some really bland stuff, but it just made sure that it had like a lot of calories so I wouldn't just run out of food. Um, and the first time I didn't get anything sweet. So by the end of the week, I was, I really needed something sweet. Um, whether it's just like fruit or jelly or something like that. Um, yeah. So I learned from my mistakes, but it was, it was annoying that when I, when I spent the $30, I was only able to eat the things that I bought because usually there's a bunch of other food in my house and I had to say no to everything for a week. And it was, that sucked. Um, and then also just the whole, uh, shooting and editing a video every single day it just gets really draining and at the time i was also working part-time and i think yeah and i was also coaching for i think this the last one i was coaching at uh, lemoyne for tr indoor track and i was working part-time at trader joe's and i was trying to post videos daily for a week so that was really hard to do <laughs> so i was like i hate this i'm never doing it again Thank you. I appreciate your words. Okay, good. Yeah, I hope you uh, start a channel then, Sydney. I've yet to find what I enjoy. Well, then I guess you better keep looking, Phil. Try just try different things all the time. Eventually, you'll find something you like. Because uh, if you haven't found what you like, then you definitely haven't tried everything. I love the video when you go shopping with your mom. Yeah, I know a lot of people did. Um, Aldi did not like that though. They did not like when we were shooting videos because apparently that's their policy. We even asked them specifically and showed them our videos like, hey, we're like really promoting you on our, on our channel and stuff all the time. And they're like, yeah, it's just our policy. It's like, okay, well, you're losing business because I definitely have people who uh, who have commented saying that they, um, they started shopping at Aldi because of our videos. Biggest anime betrayal is Chris is live streaming at the same time as you. I know, what the heck? I should go comment on his stream. <laughs> Although he does have um, he does have a guest on there, so I don't want to be that guy who's like ruining it for a guest. If it was just him, I probably uh, I probably would. I used to work at Whole Foods. Oh, that's cool. Did you like working there? Um, my last couple jobs were working at so I, I worked at Trader Joe's. Before that, I worked at a restaurant called Core Life Eatery, uh, and then before that, I was a boat detailer. Before that, uh, I worked a little bit in the dining hall at my college at Brockport. Um, and I also was like a, a line cook slash burger flipper kind of guy. Uh, and this is also when I was vegan. Um, I started before I was vegan, though. Um, it's just like a line cook at a breakfast and lunch uh, restaurant. I had to be there like 5.30 a.m. Uh, and then before that. I was a sunglasses salesman. That didn't last very long. And my first job was um, I was a dishwasher at a it was a golf themed breakfast and lunch restaurant that also did fish dinners. Very random, <laughs> but that was what it was. I want to try carpentry, but not sure where to start. Well, you start with YouTube for sure. Um, you could also start with Skillshare. Um, I would just say like watch videos, even if you are not planning on following along with the video, just watch the video and see if it interests you. See if you're like, wow, that seems like it'd be so cool. Then, um, you know, just see if it, it looks interesting to you. That's what I do anyway. If I think a hobby sounds interesting, then I'll watch videos about it and see if I like it. Like I thought like for like a minute, uh, a couple months ago, I was like, Hey, maybe I'll get into knitting. And then I watched some videos and I was like, nah, I don't think I'd like that. <laughs> 
There's only one thing I can think of that interests me. We'll go with that. Yeah, until I got fired from being in a car accident, couldn't push the cord up the hill both ways. Worked at Whole Foods and it was the worst job I ever had. <laughs> Finally caught you live. Well, hey, mom has gone nuts. <laughs> Did you like working at TJ's? I want to apply there. Once I go down to part time at college, yeah. So they're they're very picky about who they hire as far as like their attitude. Like that matters a lot. Um, they want to always hire people who are like happy and bubbly and like a good a person who can like hold up a conversation pretty easily. Because um, they want people like when you're checking out, they really want people who are like talking the whole time and they're like, oh, I just tried this product. It's so good. Have you guys tried this other product? Like they they want you to be like pushing products all the time and just like talking the whole time and if you're not talking the whole time when you're like doing a um like when you're cashing someone out they'll be like hey what the heck you gotta keep talking to people um so if you're able to do that you are probably gonna work out pretty well there <laughs> i don't know i didn't know boat tea tailors existed yep well now you know i did it for like six weeks and i did not like it <laughs> oh yeah i uh so jm said that i uh, Miss most of the live streams, but you're finally here. Well, I guess with the whole schmor and schmeen, um, people are more likely to come to these live streams. I'm going to move this a little bit. Maybe I'll, yeah, I think that's about good. Although you can't really see me, it's like really dark. So we can just up the exposure a little. Yeah, I guess that's probably better. Just go all the way, see how it looks. Background is really blown out. Okay, so back to this. I was a cashier, then I went to floral, got sent back to cashiering because I wouldn't take moldy flowers out. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I've, I've heard some weird stuff. I worked in grocery. I worked at a, I work at a co-op now, and it's great. Just the corporate set of Whole Foods is miserable. Yeah, so that's one thing I noticed. Like when I was working at Core Life Eatery, like I really, really liked working at the restaurant when. It was just like me and my friends were just working there. Um, and yeah, it was just really fun. And then it got corporate and then they had a bunch of policies that didn't necessarily make sense for our store, but they had to, they had to make these new rules. It was, there was just like so many new rules with um, when it became a corporate restaurant, like when there was like chains, but when it was just the one restaurant, it wasn't bad at all. How is the Hercules crew all doing? If you go watch the most recent video, you'll know. Um, but everyone's good. <laughs> it's Jay Mallory. just changed my YouTube name. Oh, okay. Well, glad to hear have you here. It's Jay Mallory. What's, what's your first name? So I think Mallory is your last name, right? Jay, uh, how's the weather? For you here in the UK, we had some of the best weather, but we aren't <laughs> allowed out. Um, it's just like gloomy out right now. I can show you guys, but there's no, um, it's all tangled up. I got a lot of cords over here. Um, yeah, there's no snow though right now, which on uh, my last video, you guys saw there was snow, but just gloomy out. How long is left on the bread? Uh, 12 minutes. So we're almost there. It snowed in Chicago last week. Oh, yeah. It snowed a couple times um, past week or so. It's gloomy in New Jersey, too. Yeah. Hello, Craig, a fan from Algeria. Oh, cool. I don't think I have too many viewers in, uh, in Algeria. That's so cool, though, that, like, you can post a video on YouTube. There's no, like, barrier for entry, and people from all over the world can watch your videos. I think it's pretty cool. Love you and your family's interaction. Thanks. What kind of bread did I make? I made some pecan, um, pecan banana bread with chocolate chips on top. If the cord was long enough, I would bring... You guys over here to look at it. I'm gonna look, see if it's risen a little bit. I don't think it's supposed to rise too much, but it should rise a little bit. Cause it's baking soda. Oh yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. I should just. Yeah. Oh, it's looking kind of brown though. You want to take it out a couple minutes early? I'll do the old toothpick maneuver. <sighs> kind of. Thank 
you for this stream. Well, thank you for showing up. Uh, my family keeps attacking me to make some. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? Why haven't you made any banana bread? Uh, would you ever make tiramisu? I feel like everyone has coffee grounds around. Um, I, we actually don't have any coffee grounds here because Kara and I don't really drink coffee. Um, I've never really liked the flavor of coffee. Um, and I, I have recently gotten into lattes. Uh, like right before the whole schmorenschmein happened. Do we have any oat flour recipes? Um, I've definitely made stuff with oat flour before. I just grind up normal oats. I don't buy oat flour though, but... Ew, coffee. Yeah, that's what I think. I have deep dish vegan pizza. $5 from Day of Cheese. Also worth it. Hi, Craig. Sending love from Norway. Love you and your family. Thank you. Coffee is for nerds. That's right, Wajita. <laughs> I live in the suburbs, about an hour outside the city. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel like I have this kind of like blessing and a curse when it comes to waking up. So the blessing slash curse is when I wake up, I'm usually not groggy. Like I can wake up and I can just go. But if I wake up at like 6 a.m. to go to the bathroom, I'm basically up for the day, no matter when I went to bed. So. Sometimes it's hard, it's like really difficult for me to fall back to sleep, but I can also just wake up and feel fine after not very many hours of sleep. So kind of, kind of sucks, but it's kind of good. This is so cool to connect with people from around the world. Yeah, I, I think so too. And it's kind of cool that like people can write stuff and then I can react to it. And like, and you guys can react to each other's stuff. Like you guys can comment to, uh, to each other's stuff live. Um, and it's just, it's cool. We got like, how many people we got? Like, I think, hold on, I got to check. I think it was like, what, 200 or so? Yeah, 216 people watching. Like, this is pretty cool. Tea is better. Yeah, okay. Did you guys see my tea library in my last video? Maybe I have to do that. Let's see if this cord is long enough. Well, I think I can get this over here. Uh, oh, this is like just long enough. This is the cord. So, okay. The stuff over here is mine. The stuff over here is Kara's. Um, I have extra sleepy time tea. Like I said, sometimes it's hard for me to fall asleep. And I also have this morning thunder. I actually got this um, from, I think, uh, Joseph post if you're still here joseph um he posted i think on instagram or something saying this is a good thing for not having coffee although i never really like coffee so if i do need a little bit of caffeine if i'm tired but i still need to be up i'll have this um oh where's my uh, tazo tea where is it um tazo passion tea is like my favorite it's hidden in here somewhere um this one i got for i think my birthday or something or maybe it was easter or Christmas? I don't know. My my parents just got me like this thing of uh, many flavors of tea. I don't think you guys can see that really. Maybe it'll focus. Yeah, it's just a sampler. So there's like cherry, blueberry, peach, raspberry. A lot of, a lot of tea. Morning thunder is the best. Yeah, yeah. I I like it. I like um. Cooking it, if you cook tea, I don't know how you boil it, whatever. Um, and then I'll just add some soy milk to it, it's really good. The sleepy time is good. Yeah, so I, I got extra sleepy time tea. Um, and so so last night I used melatonin. I, I fell asleep fine, but I woke up at like 4 a.m. and I was like, like I said, I was just like wide awake. And I was like, what the heck? Because usually if I take melatonin, it knocks, it'll knock me out, but I'll be out for like four hours and then I'm like up. So I was like, all right, if it's at 4 a.m. and I take this and I'm up at 8, that's fine. So <laughs> that's why I, I took that. You love celestial teas. Yeah, celestial's got some really good teas. Man, a chamomile. Yeah, I would say my favorite, though, just flavor-wise, if, if we're just talking flavor, um, I would say the Tazo Passion Tea is really, really good. It's my favorite. It's very flavorful. And a lot of times I'll add sugar to my tea, but I do not feel like I even need to add sugar to that. It's super good. So we've got six and a half minutes left. I'll see if I can uh, show you guys what this looks like right now. Oh, the cord is like really stretched. Yeah, it rose a little bit. Okay, close it back up. I want the heat to get out. Yeah, I do, I do want to be able to have you guys see me do the taste test. So I don't know how much longer we'll be able to. Oh, yeah, it's only 4.30. Yeah, we could last here for, I don't know, a while longer. 
coffee 2020. <laughs> Yay, mukbang time. Yeah, once it cools down. Um, partially for my hands, and also I don't want it to get like real doughy or anything. Like the other day, Kara and I made some whole wheat bread from the minimalist baker, and it said don't cut into it too early because it'll get doughy. I didn't, yeah, you probably can't really see it, but this is the whole wheat bread, which I like this even better than the other white bread we made the other day. Um, and it got a little doughy in the inside because it, we were impatient and wanted to eat it when it was um, still warm, and it was really good. But then after the first couple slices, we're like, oh, this is like doughy in the middle now. <laughs> Better have enough to share with the class. Well, I don't. So you're just going to have to deal with it. You guys can't come over. Use a fork to check if it's done. Yeah, I have uh, some toothpicks. I can't wait for one day when I can just come over midstream and steal food. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd probably still have to let you in unless you got a key to the, to the place. Just dust it off my channel. Sounds like Sid. Thanks for encouraging the encouraging kick in the schmance. <laughs> Thanks. Sabrina, why are you crying? What happened? That works too. Are there quick checks in Wawa and Syracuse? Um, no, we have um, Quick Fill and Sit Go. I guess those are probably the two common ones. And then there's Burn Dairy. My girlfriend is from Southern California. When we went to New Jersey, she loved the convenience stores. Huh, I thought everybody had convenience stores. You should check out the Republic of Tea online. <laughs> they have some really good blends. She's crying because you won't share. Ah, well, that sucks, but I have it all. I have all the banana bread. You guys can just watch me eat it. <laughs> okay, this is like, this has got to be done sometime soon. It, it looks like it's, it looks like it's done. It's like brown in the edges. Okay, maybe I'll take it out and you guys can be the judge for me of if it's done. Or maybe we could all, we'll just all look at the toothpicks. So I'm just going to move this just a little bit closer. Okay, I'm going to angle this down so you guys can... Actually, see the bread. Okay. Oh, so Sandra, if you're watching, these are well, they're kind of dirty. I gotta. I don't know if there's if there's a way to wash them, but these are from Sandra, who made these by hand from the Netherlands, sent them over. They are just beautiful, and I usually don't like to pick things up with them, but I'll put them on the counter so I don't, um, you know, ruin the counter by <laughs> by uh, putting hot stuff right on the counter. So apparently it's not good for granite to do that. So I'm going to take these out. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I think that's definitely done. Yeah. It's like golden brown. It's like cracked on top. Okay. I probably could have taken this out a little bit ago. Oh heck yeah. Clean as a clean as all heck. I've got a close up for you guys. And I'm gonna put these back on so I don't burn my hands right off my body, as Chris would say. Turn this off. I'll just put these over here. I'll probably need them when you got a second. Okay, turn this off so you can actually, yeah. Look at that. So beautiful. All those chocolate chips. I'll just zoom out a little bit. And that way. There we go. I know what I'm doing, sort of. <laughs> oh, 
know, there's a lot of uh, comments I missed. We'll live vicariously through Craig. Yeah. Uh, pick things up, put them down. Cool. Uh, I'm going to pick your camera up and start shooting soon. That's cool. I'll check out your channel, Sydney. Craig, I think this is the perfect time to grow a handlebar mustache and become level 35 gentleman. Joseph says, whoa, language. Are you drinking moonshine out of that jar? No. No, I would never. Nice, you can almost smell it. <laughs> Did you use a recipe? I tried to. <laughs> Looks like a like rectangular cookie, yeah. <laughs> Wash them on delicate, okay, and low in the dryer. I could probably just hang dry them too. Most heavenly placed chips ever, yeah. <laughs> heavenly placed chips is so satisfying, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait for that to cool down. Oh yeah, I also okay. So do you guys do this? I opened up um, after, um, you know, after you're done cooking. I like to just open up the oven, heat up the house. Especially since it's like this time of year, uh, I could actually use some heat. Because <laughs> it's like 40 degrees out or something. Cut a slice and eat in front of us. Yeah, I, I will in a second once it cools down. <laughs> okay, so for the people who know stuff about quick breads, can you just cut into it when it's still hot? Like, will anything bad happen to the the bread? Like, Because I, like I said the other day, like Kara and I cut into some whole wheat bread and it just became kind of doughy afterwards. I kind of don't want that to happen. Easy, it needs to cool. <laughs> yeah, but it sucks because like the the pan is hot, so it's gonna be a while. Next time, make two at a time or three. Yeah, I could do that. It will fall apart. Oh, okay, the steam comes out and gets dry. Sounds like you guys know more what you're talking about. All right, so everyone's saying let it cool. It might fall apart on me. <laughs> all right, I got the message, guys. I'll wait. I I'll, uh, I know some people were impatient, but uh, I'll have to wait. So I hope I don't have to wait for too long because I don't know how, how interested you guys would be in watching a stream because we've already been streaming for like an hour and a half. Is Crystal doing his heckin' stream? That traitor. Like, uh, what's his face? Joseph. Why did I just say what's his face? Like Joseph said, top 10 anime betrayal. Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah. What he said. But if you guys want to go on his uh, stream real quick and uh, and tell him that he's a traitor, that's okay. <laughs> um, take it out and let it cool. So the I don't know how I'd be able to take it out though, because if I were to like, because when Kara and I took some bread out the other day, we just like flipped it over. But if I flip it over, all the chocolate chips on the outside are gonna like melt and just not look very aesthetically pleasing. Oh, you know what? Maybe I could um maybe you guys could watch me since I have another one of these cameras. I could use my other camera to take photos of that, and you guys can watch me take photos of it. Would that be okay? Would that be cool to you guys? Because <laughs> I was thinking about that last time I did um, my video for the tempeh tacos. I spent like, I swear, it was, I spent like 30 minutes or so just trying to get the perfect photo. Um, I even called Dylan, and I showed him what my setup was, and I was like, I feel like there's just like something missing. So I, I FaceTimed him, and... Um, and it was, it was just like so much effort just to do that. So, all right. So a lot of people are saying that. So I'm going to go grab my camera. I'm going to grab a couple lenses and I'll be right back. So I can still talk to you guys while I'm doing this though, because that's the beauty of having a lot mic. So all right, I'm going to grab where my camera. I have a whole drawer. I can't. Uh, 
for my macro lens. And I think my camera's actually a bag. Yeah, that's a good place to put it. Um, put my, I'm just narrating. Let me put my map lens on here. And I'll see if we can get shots of that. Um, I might also want to grab my 24 millimeter f1.4 lens, which I know is gibberish to a lot of you guys. But I use the uh, 24 mil f1.4 a lot when I'm doing my live streams for um, like my thumbnail editing. So like if a lot of people have, oh, wow, just walking into this kitchen, just is like, whoa, it smells so good. Um, people have noticed before that like the live streams look really, really nice when I have my 24 mil lens, which I could actually just put it on right now and show you guys what it looks like. So this is my lens swap. So this is like, there's just like so with this lens, there's like so much background blur um, because it goes down to F1.4 and my other lens uh, that I was using goes to F4. But the only thing is with this lens, I can't zoom it. So I kind of like for this sort of live stream, I would want to use this lens, which doesn't have as much background blur, blur, but it's also probably better because it has a, a bigger depth of field so that like I can be in focus and the food that I'm making can be in focus. Whereas like if I put my hand here, I'm so out of focus and like, it's not really that far from my body. Whereas with this lens, a lot more things are in focus and I can zoom. So anyway, yes, yeah, so you know, I can zoom. And then even like when I say like, I put my hand here, like we're kind of both in focus here. So anyway, put it on a rack. So I, I have it on top of my stove which is sort of like a rack because it's not like directly on, I don't know, it's kind of like a rack, right? Like that? I don't know. What do I know? Not a whole lot. Nice camera ones. Thanks. Yeah, they cost a lot of money. <laughs> Um, so that's one thing I can talk like I can talk a lot about cameras and I can talk a lot about editing but I feel like that's not really my demographic on this channel so um, sometimes I get in the weeds when I'm talking about stuff like that because I really like talking about stuff like that uh, are you using a GoPro ha! you wish no I have a GoPro but I do not stream with a GoPro I stream with my Sony a7 III so actually this is the same camera that I'm streaming with but I, this is my macro lens so uh, this macro lens allows me to get really really close um, um, but this macro lens allows me to get really, really close because most lenses have what's called a minimum focusing distance. So the minimum focusing distance means like, say this is like the lens for the camera. Uh, I can, the closest I can get to anything is here and it'll be in focus. But if I come here, it's not gonna be in focus because there's just mechanically, there's no way to do that. Um, unless you want to pay the big bucks. Um, so that's why this is a very specific lens because you can get like really close. Like I can get like this close to an object and it'll be in focus. Um, whereas like I said, with other lenses, you have to be like this far away. So this is a really cool lens. It allows you to get a lot of different types of shots, but it's very zoomed in. So I definitely would not be able to um, shoot a video with it unless I was doing something very zoomed in. So anyway, I'll just show you guys me trying to take a photo. No, 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 cut into it. <laughs> How much is the lens? So, uh, let's see. This 24 millimeter lens, I want to say this was like twelve or $1,300. This lens, I think it was like $1,100. And this lens, I think was like thirteen or $1,400. And the camera itself is like $2,000. So like, this is really expensive stuff. <laughs> But this is, I really, really like shooting and stuff like this. Like it's, this is a hobby of mine as well as my job. Oh man. So right now I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to change the shutter speed to as low as I can. 
But the ISO is going to be really high. But I also don't want to go too low. Let's see. So this is like the kind of photo. This is like what I just took, if you can see that. Hold on. See if it'll focus. I'm trying to focus it. See, that's what I mean when I said minimum focusing distance. There's a lot of, uh, it's got to be kind of far away in order for you to be able to see it. I don't know. You won't be able to see it. So, but it's, it is kind of tough to get um, the right lighting for this over here. So I guess by the window would probably be better. Maybe I could take it out with like some tongs or something. Um, oh no, am I going to ruin this? And you guys are just going to watch me ruin everything? Okay, I'm going to ask you guys how what's the best way to go about doing this because I feel like I'm going to ruin it. So you guys just tell me. I've got tongs. Should I use tongs? Yeah, extended release meltdown. Oh, okay. I need to get a camera love photography. Yeah, photography's fun. Thirteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars. Yeah, so twenty-four millimeter. So twenty-four millimeter refers to like the focal length. So the the smaller the number, the wider it is. So um, basically, like this is at sixteen millimeters, and this is at thirty-five millimeters. Um, so and 24 millimeters is right there. So that's this lens is stuck at 24 millimeters. So it's a prime lens. So um, the reason that there's zoom lenses and prime lenses is like so this is at f4 the whole way through, and this is at f1.4. So the difference is uh, f4, as you can see, like when I showed you guys before, I can put my hand here, and me and myself, my hand are kind of both in focus. Uh, let's see, actually, I'm just gonna focus on my hand. Yeah, even though my hand uh, can be in focus and I can be in focus too, but at f1.4, you have a much shallower depth of field, which sometimes you want. For a live stream like this, it's not really what you want. But if you're taking like a portrait photo, you might want that. Um, and it also lets in a lot more light. So it just kind of depends what you want. Your videos are always high quality and focus. Thank you. Show us your camera collection. Yeah, so I basically have the identical camera that I'm shooting with over there, over here. I just two of the same cameras. Tip it out on the rack. No tongs. All right, so I don't want to do the flip, though, because, like I said, like the, the chocolate on top is like still kind of melty, so I don't want it to like get everywhere, and also I feel like it just wouldn't look very good. Hey Craig, been watching you for a while. I love your channel. Thank you. Next, line the parchment paper. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll line the line of the parchment paper next time. Cut into squares. Yeah. Why do you have two of the same camera? Because I really love these cameras, um, and also it's really helpful. Like if I'm going to be going somewhere, like sometimes I go on uh, trips. Like I've gone to Expo West, which is out in California. Um, so I have to bring my camera there in order to blog stuff. And then Dylan still has to be able to shoot stuff at Hercules. So if I bring my camera out there and I don't have one here, he can't shoot anything. And if he does, he has like his own camera, but it's honestly just not as good as my camera. So I didn't want there to be a dip in quality when I am to like go to somewhere else. Like if I, I, was, I was planning on going to Expo East. So again, I would want Dylan to be able to have the option to shoot stuff. Uh, and also for cases like this, where like um, there are some times when I'm like at the Hercules Candy shop um, when say I'm getting a time lapse of something getting done but there's something interesting that's also happening on so I have to pick do I want to get that interesting thing or do I want to continue this time lapse and when you have two cameras you're able to be like well yeah there's a cool thing going on but there's also a time lapse so I'll keep doing this time lapse and just grab my other camera and I don't miss anything so um, just stuff like that there's there's definitely some circumstances where you want to have two cameras um, but that's for like down the road if you're starting out and you um, if you want to get started out on YouTube uh, I would I would definitely not say start with two cameras because that's definitely a waste of money unless you are just filthy rich and don't know what to do your money. Because <laughs> um, I started out with literally my laptop webcam, which is this laptop is a vast upgrade from my first laptop I had. Um, 
But yeah, I think my first video was uploaded in like 244 or 240p or something like that. Maybe it's 360p. It was really, really low quality. And, uh, uh, you know, I just kept trying and kept making videos. Eventually, like I remember I asked for a camera for Christmas. So my mom got me a Nikon Cool Pix S3500. And I think it was like a $80 camera or something like that. So, and I, I asked for that for Christmas. So I still didn't pay for it. Um, and then, uh, so that was like after a couple months of, like, I think I started in July and then by Christmas I got that. And then after like a year or two of that, I upgraded to an iPod touch because for the longest time I did not have a real phone. I, I like, I had a track phone. I didn't have like a phone plan. Um, I feel like I don't really need these uh, tongs anymore. Um, because I did not want to have to pay for a phone plan. So I paid for like a track phone. So I think I paid like a hundred or 200 bucks a year for my phone plan. And I, um, I would just use like a track phone for that. And then I'd use my iPod touch when like as a phone when I had Wi-Fi. Um, so I was always walking around with like a iPod touch and a phone. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I upgraded to an iPod touch and it was like my third upgrade. So that's why like, if people tell me that they only have a phone, so they can't start a YouTube channel, it's like, dude, if I had a phone that you have right now, I, my channel would have been so much better off starting with that. I was carrying around my laptop webcam. Um, it was like the built-in one. It wasn't a good one. It was a really bad one, but that's what I was doing for like my first several videos. And then eventually, like I said, I upgraded to an $80 camera, $80 camera. Okay. <laughs> so cheap <laughs> in the, in the world of cameras. Anyway, 80 bucks is still a lot of money. Uh, I'd love to have a good camera one day. Yeah, it's really, they're really nice. They're really fun to have. Uh, run a knife around the bread, then tip it out with your fingers. Okay. Maybe I could do that. Your camera is my dream camera. Honestly, it's my dream camera. Like I am so thankful that I'm able to shoot with a camera like this that I love so much. Like I really, really love these cameras. The Sony a7 III. They're just like such a good camera. Okay. So people were saying I could run a knife along the side of it. Um, actually, the whole reason I got into Sony's is because uh, when I went to Vegan YouTube House, um, Brian was shooting with an a7S II. And I was like, whoa, this low light performance is so much better than mine. Like mine is so garbage. Like if I, cause I was shooting with a Canon 70D and when I would shoot with that, if it wasn't very good lighting, it would just, it just didn't work. Oh okay, yeah. This is like not even really stuck. I think because I sprayed it with oil. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't too hot anyway. It's still very warm. Oh no. I'm just scared to take this out though. You guys gonna watch me fail live? Ah, ah, shh. See, that's what I didn't want to happen. Okay, it's not. That's not too bad. Just a couple. Just a couple of the. Um, oh no, I got some chocolate chip on my fingers. But a couple of the chocolate chips got massacred. But other than that, it's not too bad. Okay, so people who know stuff about quick breads, like Jane, I, I hope you're still here. Um, can I start cutting into it now? <laughs> That's all I want to know. Okay, people are saying why, why, why. I don't know. I don't know why you're saying that too, though. <laughs> It actually went very smoothly. Still here. Yes, you can. Okay. So if I can get into it, then I'm going to do it. Jane said I could. So if this goes badly, I'm going to blame Jane, okay? She's going to assume full responsibility. And she has not agreed to that, but that's okay because I agreed for her. Oh, no. I had spot focus on this whole time. How embarrassing. Okay. And it looks like my camera is about to die. So you guys should still be able to hear me just fine, but I'm going to do a quick battery swap. And you guys will just be blind for a second. But then... I'll get your site back. I'm just going to do a quick, quick swap. All right. And let's see. You guys should be back. All right. <laughs> Jane's got the laughing, crying face. Um, how's the battery life on your camera? So I've been streaming for the past almost two hours, and only now did it start to die. So look, that's pretty good. 
Okay, where's my bread knife? Do I have to wash my bread knife? I might have to. Where do, unless it's in the... Might be in the, um, the sink here. Oh no! Where's the bread knife? Oh, actually I think it's over here because we had other bread. So, I'm just going to uh, use this bread knife. I feel like the loaf was, like the loaf pan was kind of holding its shape. Because now it looks kind of a little droopy, but we'll uh, cut it anyway. I'll give myself a big, thick slice. You know what? I'll get you guys a little bit closer. Well, as close as I can, anyway. Let me get you guys really down low so you can really appreciate all this. Sorry guys, <laughs> you have to remember to distribute the weight properly when you're setting up a tripod, and I did not do that. Okay. All right, so we'll do a side view like this. I think this would probably be good, right? All right. I'm gonna grab the bread knife. Now I kind of wish that I was left-handed because this is gonna be weird because there's a wall here and it's just it's a whole thing. But anyway. Ooh, there's still steam coming out. Oh no, you guys missed it. All right, well now I can actually move the camera now that I don't have a knife in my hand. Yeah. Ah, got chocolate on my finger, my thumb. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see all the pecans in there. Yeah, that's that looks better, I think. I forgot I can use I can move the camera. <laughs> Chocolate chips. It's it's hard to do stuff with one hand though. Okay. Now I'm gonna taste test. I'll put you guys back over here. And we'll do a taste test. <laughs> that was <laughs> put us by the window. Okay, this is just going to take a second for me to set this up. Okay, okay that's not going to work. If you have this, tri this tripod, sometimes, like, if you try to set it up, it just keeps falling. So, oh, I think I know why. Okay, this is going to take a second. I just got to, like, adjust the legs a little bit. So, you know, if you're, if you're queasy or you get motion sickness, maybe look away from the camera for a second because there's really no way to do this very smoothly. <laughs> okay, and I think I hit the spot focus. Yeah, I did. So I gotta tap that. All right. Looks like it might be stable-ish. Okay. <sighs> go, go, gagged it, arms. Can I get you a cooker? Is that like a person? You're going to get me a, a person who cooks for me? I'll, I'll accept that. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if I didn't mess this up too bad. I'm going to brighten this up a little. All right. Mm. Right when I bit in, you get the pecan. Oh my God, this is so good. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Dying old age. Here's at work. Bon appetit. Don't even know I'm here. Well, that's okay. I'm just glad you are here. Yeah, this is really good. Can you guys hear me chewing? Is it gross? Is it too gross? Yeah, this is really good. Um, you guys probably can't see because it's so dark. Man, lighting is hard. I'll just brighten the heck out of this for a little bit. It's still really dark. Hold on, I'll turn off this light. It'll probably help. Hmm. 
I think that's yeah, that's about as bright as I can get it. <laughs> Ooh, put vegan butter on it while it's still warm. Okay. I'll eat another piece just for you guys. Cannot hear any chewing. Okay, that's good. Because I don't know about you guys, but I hate the sound of people chewing. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get another shot for you guys of me cutting it. Did you guys like the last shot or did you guys want like a different angle? I'm just going to set this up low again and go check what you guys are saying. Okay, people are saying great shot that went like that. Okay, I'll do a slightly different angle this time. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, that was a satisfying clump. Clump! Okay, now I'm gonna grab some oyth balance and a buttock knife. Okay, so this is what I do. I feel like uh, talking about how you spread your butter is like, I don't know. It's, do people really talk about that? But this is what I've been doing um, when stuff isn't like super melted recently. Um, I just try to go like this and like get like a really thin amount so like you can spread it really easily. So it just comes out kind of like that. Because if it's too thick, oh yeah, it's like melting. Can you guys see that? It's like melting right when I put it on. I'm going to add some more because, you know, you might as well go big or go home. I'm already home, so I might as well just go big. I'm going big and go home. Ah, stupid butter. I hate gravity. Whoever invented gravity, you can just go heck off. Okay, that's a lot of butter. Okay. <laughs> All right. So move you guys back over here to my taste testing location. Oh geez, there goes the laptop. I hope I didn't get any food on my crazy expensive lens. <laughs> Need more butter. Oh, and there's like chocolate melting on the top. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Woo! Believe it or not, this is even better. <laughs> You're going big at home. <laughs> How long do you think that loaf of bread will last in your house? My bet is it's gone by tomorrow night. I could see that happening. Mm. Have you guys ever had um, turn stuff like this into French toast? Because I've had that. It's so good. I'm going to finish chewing before I keep talking. I just want to make sure that this is not going to my shirt again. Um, the restaurant that I used to work at was called Pardsies. It was the restaurant that um, my mom got me the job there when she was a waitress. So I started washing dishes there and I got free lunch there. And can you see all the chalk on my teeth? No, it's really dark. You can't see that. Um, but yeah, I would get free lunch there. So one of my favorite ones was, uh, was a French toast of banana nut bread. And that's basically what this is, but with chocolate chips. It's really good. Teach us how to make French toast next time. I don't really make French toast, but I could probably figure it out. <laughs> Maybe we could do that next time. Do pancakes or waffles or French toast, some kind of breakfast thing for dinner. Cause I feel like people really like breakfast for dinner, you know? Vegan chala, what the heck is vegan chala? What the heck is chala? I feel like I've heard of that before. I don't know what it is though. Mm. This is really good. Chickpea flour, French toast. Okay. Soak it in no egg. I love breakfast for dinner. Yeah, me too. Mmm. Cinnamon raisin bread, French toast. That'd be good. 
<laughs> How do you make French toast without eggs? Very carefully. Um, I don't know, but I know you could Google it and figure it out. That's what I, that's what I would do if I got to do a recipe. I mean, whenever you want to find how to find out how to do anything, you just Google it or YouTube it, and there's the answer. Um, thank you, Lise. Is that how you say your name? Um, for the I think it was, was is that Norwegian money or super chat whatever. Thank you for the hot, the fox sticker. <laughs> Vietnamese food. Am I taking any to Hercules? I do not plan on doing that. Yes, no region. Okay, cool. How tall am I? I'm um, five foot. Well, I think 4'11". My whole family's um, just all five foot. We all have very short houses. So we look normal in our videos. Yeah, height question. <laughs> this angle makes them look seven foot. No, so um, yeah, my my this ceiling is only um, five feet tall, and I'm about four feet. So yeah, just to give you a reference, I should put this butter away before it melts, especially since it's like on the stove that just got done cooking stuff. Okay, I won't clean up too much when you guys are here. I'll have to clean up before Carrie gets home, though. I don't want to get in trouble. At least share with your sister. Yeah, oh yeah, Carrie will definitely be uh, having some of this for sure. Got a tape measure. You gotta be at least five two. <laughs> uh, did you forget to wash your hands? No, I licked them. Don't worry. Oh my god, with your yoga moves, you wouldn't hit below the belt. <laughs> yoga kick. Oh wow, some of you guys have been watching for a long time. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah, I've noticed that like some of you guys have been commenting this whole time. So thank you. You guys have been you guys stuck around for like the past two hours. Like. I don't know, just like the fact that someone would watch for two hours, like, thank you. Like, I would never think that someone that, let's see, how many people are watching right now? That like, two, over 200 people would want to watch me fumble around the kitchen, not really knowing what I'm doing, and somehow make some halfway decent banana bread. <gasps> banana bread with peanut butter! Oh my god, why didn't I put peanut butter in there? Bananas and peanut butter, that's like such a good combo. Does anybody else feel like they'd have to clean their kitchen five times more than usual due to the Schmorn Schmien? <laughs> I Okay, so this is what I found like the first couple of days of Schmorn and Schmien, um, is that like, I feel like the house is just cleaner because when you are, when you come home from a day of work and your house is kind of dirty, I'm just going to brighten this up again. I feel like I have to keep doing that. Um, when you come home from a day of work and you notice that your house is dirty, you're like, Ugh, I feel like I should clean, but I just don't want to. I'm tired. And then when you aren't working as much and your house is dirty, you're like, oh, yeah, I have the energy to clean. Yeah, I'll clean this. I'll clean this. And you get in a cleaning mood and your whole house is just like spotless. And then once the schmorn is over, your house will probably go back to normal. What's two hours when you're making banana bread? <laughs> uh, there's banana bread at Trader Joe's you can buy? I didn't know. You're a likable guy. Aw. Thanks, Fergie. Your oven lit. Your oven light is still on? Oh, yeah. I wonder if it's like a car and just automatically shuts off. I don't know. What do I know? Not a whole lot of stuff about my uh, oven, apparently. You need to read Spark Joy by Marie Kondo. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that one. Um, I So during this, Schmorn I've never really been a very voracious reader. Um, but I have been into reading more since there's not a whole lot that you can do. So I, since this whole schmorange mean, I have finished, um, what's the, I can't think of the book name. 
The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. That was a good book. I like the first half of the book because it talks about like everyday circumstances that you might find yourself in. Um, and then the ha second half of the book is like for like companies and groups of like habits and stuff. So like, uh, I didn't find that as interesting. Um, but if that's what you're interested in, then you'd probably find it interesting. But I just like the beginning and stuff because I feel like it had more to do with like the habits of my life. Um, so I like that. I mean, then I read The Alchemist, which is like, sometimes it could get a little bit hippie, uh, a little too hippy dippy. But um, I, it was cool that like the book was about basically like what what they called was finding your personal legend and then or just basically finding what you were meant to do in your life and then not giving up on that even when you run into a bunch of obstacles and you get distracted along the way just not giving up and just keep going for what your what your personal legend is so there's that and then i started reading um the richest man in babylon i started reading that the other day i'm like a quarter of the way through it um and i think that one I've heard of that book and I kind of know, I kind of knew like the gist of what it was about for a while, but I'm finally actually reading it. And the reason I've been into reading recently is because I also, yesterday, I finally, my Kindle came in because I've been using Kara's Kindle. Um, and it's cool that like there's an app called Hoopla. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that before. I'll just type it in the chat so you guys can see what it's called um, or how it's spelled. Hoopla. Um, if you have, in the US at least, I don't know if it works the same in like other countries, but in the US, if you have a library card then you can download any like it's uh ebooks um uh, audiobooks i think they probably have like some music and movies and stuff but i've just been getting um audiobooks and ebooks um not sponsored yeah because <laughs> it's a free app um like i said if you have a library card uh, you might be able to sign up with it. if you don't i don't know um but uh yeah so i've been reading um some books if I, that i can better say some for kara to julie robinson thank you for the super chat appreciate it um but uh, yeah, so I, the, so the, the Richest Man in Babylon is, so far, it, it's about like this guy, I mean, like I said, only a quarter of the way through it, but I think the gist of it is like, um, the reason that he got rich is because he set aside 10% of his wealth instead of just spending, like as it came in, spending it and spending it like everyone else did, he set aside 10% of his wealth to like put into savings. And by the end of the week, he's like, oh, I don't really notice any difference. Like he got paid 10 gold coins or something like that. And he put away one of them every week. He put away one of them. And then after a year of doing that, he had enough money to invest in something else. And then that money that he made, made more money. And then if you set aside 10% of what you make and then invest it, then the money, basically the way that they described it was like, making your money work for you like think well okay so they had slaves back then so i wouldn't use this terminology but they said think of your each gold coin that you made as like a slave that's working for you so basically your money that you make makes you money so that's basically how he became the richest man in babylon i like how kindle have the power to tell you what a word means when you're reading yeah so i, I found that to be pretty cool too because there's some times that i want to look up what a word means and I have to pull out my phone and do it. <laughs> I like the book, The Richest Man of Babylon. Yeah, it was pretty good. My money doesn't make me money. Yeah, so that's, that's you know, it's not going to make you money unless you invest it. Um, which I am a big fan of Roth IRAs. I don't know how many, do you guys know what like Roth IRAs are? Do you want me to go into that? I know this is not a financial channel and I'm not giving anybody advice, but I'm just telling you like look into this and then decide if it's right for you. I like how candles don't hurt your eyes. Okay, yeah, because so I've only been using Kara's for like the past couple of days because I was like, oh, wait, you have a Kindle. I forgot because she like never really uses it. And then I got my own. And it's been really nice. No money to invest. So I guess you'd have to focus on saving first. Yes, I know what Roth IRA is. I'm a finance major. Cool, cool. That's good. Do you play Minecraft? I do not. Oh, do a Let's Play Minecraft. Yeah, so I don't even play Minecraft. So that's probably why. Roth IRA versus traditional IRA. I mean, there's pros and cons to each. Do I have a Patreon? I do not. You should write a book called The Richest Man in Syracuse. Yeah, that's definitely not me. <laughs> taxes now versus taxes later. Yeah. So it just depends which tax bracket you're going to be in. Um, and what I like to do is both. Like, so I get the pros and cons of each one. So you can only you can only max out your Roth IRA at $6,000. So if you put in $6,000 into your Roth IRA, basically all the money that you make is 100% tax free. But the catch is you can't touch it until you're 59 and a half. Because usually if you don't have a tax advantaged account, say you get an index funds or you get um, like individual stocks in like Apple or something like that. Say you put in $1,000 and then five years from now it turns into $2,000. Well, you take that money out, you get $2,000, but it's 2,000 tax dollars. So $2,000, maybe you only see $1,500 of that or you know depending on what tax bracket you're in. 
Um, but if you have a Roth IRA, you make $2,000, you get $2,000. And then what uh, the traditional IRA, which I think, so I also have an, a SEP IRA, which is a self-employment pension individual retirement account. So basically that means that like you can put in up to 20% of your total annual income, your total taxable annual income. And then, okay, so I didn't make as much. So we're just going to use this as like a round number. Okay. So say you made a hundred thousand dollars, then 20% of that is $20,000. And so, or that's a, say you made a hundred thousand net dollars. So it's not like the gross amount that you made. So it's after taxes, you would have made a hundred thousand dollars. You can put in 20% of that into your SEP IRA. And now you're only taxed on $80,000. So you just saved like, I don't know, $5,000 in taxes or something like that. You can't touch it before you're 59 and a half years old. Yeah. Good book choices and everyone needs to know what a Roth IRA is. Yeah, and like the sooner you open it, the better. Double self-employed. <laughs> Need to order from your lovely candy shop and take a picture with next to the tallest building in the world. <laughs> uh, we love you from Dubai. Yeah, I, I wish we could ship to Dubai. That'd be pretty cool. I wish we could ship all over the world. Tax talk with Craig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, there's a lot of tax stuff I've learned. I mean, I, I have a CPA because I, I only know so much and they're, they're doing all, all my dirty work. <laughs> like they're, they're the ones who like do all the paperwork and I just give them the forms and stuff. And like, I, I keep a spreadsheet throughout the, throughout the year of like all my um, uh, stuff that I buy with like, if I take a picture and put it on Instagram, that's tax deductible. Like the, the, you know, grocery bill is tax deductible. Um, my cameras are tax deductible. My, ca my uh, programs that I use that I pay for each year are tax deductible. Um, so it all adds up. You got to keep track of that. Otherwise you will lose a lot of money. My family owns an estate coin and jewelry shop and I'm a realtor. So you would probably know what you're talking about. <laughs> Big savings account, but better. <laughs> is rent tax deductible? I guess it would depend on what your job is, but not for me. <laughs> if I was a superhero, I'd be super self-employed woman. <laughs> is your food tax deductible if you make a video showing them? Yeah, it is. You you would have to be able to you know prove that it was in a video. Um, although I've heard like I think I've talked to my tax people and they said if I put it on Instagram, I think even an Instagram story is still considered tax deductible at that point. Um, yeah, so I like taking pictures of all the groceries that I, groceries that I put on the ground. Um, like if, if you guys see my Instagram, I'll put, uh, pictures of all, like all my groceries, like on the ground after I, um, go grocery shopping. It's not just to get a tax deduction, um, because a lot of people really like, like I've noticed that like some of those, those photos that I post get like the most likes and like the most follows and like the most comments and stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, people really like seeing other people's groceries, especially like if you're, if I guess if you're also first starting to go uh, vegan, seeing other people's groceries would be very helpful. So, you know, it's a win-win helps people out. Uh, and I get to save money on taxes. Thoughts on Dave Ramsey. I agree with some things that he says, and I see where he's coming from with a lot of things, but I don't agree on everything. Uh, like when he, so my choice, Oh, it looks like my, one of my, um, transmitter or something. It looks like the battery's going to run out relatively soon. So I might have to chop this live stream off at like five 30 or so. Um, so my thoughts on Dave Ramsey, um, like I said, I think he's got some good things to say, but, um, instead of paying off my, um, like, oh, so I did pay off a little bit of my student loans a little bit early, but I didn't pay off all of them, although I could, uh, but the only, I paid off the highest interest ones first. So there's only, I think like two, maybe 4% interest. I think it's mostly like 2% interest on the rest of my student loans. So like, it's only 2%. That's not that bad. I would rather um, put my money into like a Roth IRA for my future where annually it averaged out, you don't know like what it's going to be every year, but it averaged out to about 7%. So I'm getting about 5% more for my money. If I were to put it into like a Roth IRA, like even just an index fund instead of paying off my student loans early, which would also be helpful doing that either way, you're gaining money or losing less money. Hell yeah. Less taxes. <laughs> I like to show my groceries on Instagram. Yeah. Everyone wins. Those grocery pictures are like getting food recommendations in a single pick. <laughs> I love your videos. You have an awesome family. Thank you. Dave, Ram Dave Ramsey is good for most people. There is often a good use of debt, but maybe 
not for his main audience of people and personally. Yeah, so um, I know that he recommends not getting um, a credit card. I actually, Kara? Oh, I'm doing a live stream here just so you know. I'm, I'm wrapping up soon though. So um, like, yeah, I think by 5.30 I'll finish up. But um, I'm actually a big fan of using credit cards, but I pay them off every single month. So I'm, I don't ever carry a balance or anything. But it's great when you can have, um, you can have like, a, I have a travel credit card. So then if I travel, then I, I get a bunch of points and I can eventually get like a free, a free plane ride somewhere. Um, and then there's also, if you guys have Discover, um, there's the Discover It card and it has like, it changes the categories. So like for a three month, three or four month span, you might get like 5% off of gas or 5% off at of restaurants or grocery stores, or something like that. So you can get 5%, basically you have a 5% discount on everything. Like that's great. I've made money by using my credit card instead of like just spending with cash or debit card, you can get money back. Um, stuff like that. Free first class, first class plane, plane ride. Yeah, I don't think so. That would cost way too much. Would you make Oreo candies? Um, you mean like make Oreos? My parents have uh, made like Oreo bark before. Oatmeal for sure, no question. You can get good credit history if you behave with a credit card. Yeah, absolutely. Like I like to think of, I'm not going to go into detail about what my credit score is, but I have a pretty good credit score because my parents taught me to be financially responsible from a pretty young age. And I, uh, so I didn't even, I didn't even know about the, you know, the richest man in Babylon. But like when I first got, when I got my first job, I mean, I think my paychecks, if I was like working one day a week because I was in school, I was, and I did, I did sports. So I just worked like one Sunday every week. Um, and I would make like 45 bucks on like the paycheck and I would also get $15 in tips, um, from the waitresses cause I would help them out like bus tables and stuff. And I didn't have to do that, but I did. So then they just, they started tipping me and I was like, this is great. So what I would do is I would keep, um, the $15 in tips and then I would just put the $45 in my bank account. I wouldn't even look at it. Um, so I was actually putting away like majority of my money that I was making, um, yeah. What's your credit score? Yeah, I'm not going to go into details about stuff. I work with a CPA and an investment banker. I had a good credit score. Then I moved into my own apartment and got a diabetic cat. Yeah, I can see how that could definitely be a strain. I need to get a credit card. Yeah, as long as you're responsible, getting credit cards are really great. Like they can end up making you some money. I mean, it's not like a miracle worker. It's not gonna. It's not like a second job, but it could save you like twenty bucks a month or something. Any more book recommendations? Trying to burn time while it's in lockdown. So one of my favorite books is How to Win Friends and Influence People. It is such a good book. I've read that book a couple times. I really, really like that book. Um, Harry Potter. If you haven't read the Harry Potter series, those are very good. What? You're only five foot. Uh, I think four eleven and a half. But yeah, I'm almost five foot. Oh, wow, you got two diabetic cats. Wow, that's interesting. No worries, Lindsay. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, so I'm going to be streaming on here for another six minutes. And at 5.30, I will call it quits. And if my microphone dies before then, I'll quit then. <laughs> so if my microphone dies before then, it was nice having you guys here. And I appreciate you guys all being here. No way, five, ten minute minimum. Five minutes. Is the bread done? It is. So actually, this this video is going to go up um, uh, later as like a normal video, uh, and then you guys can just go back and see what it looked like. I think he's six four. No, I'm only six foot. I'm, in reality, I'm only six foot. <laughs> I'm a measly six foot. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how tall these ceilings actually are. Oh, maybe like nine or ten feet. Asthmatic cat. Wow, that is a struggling cat. Favorite meal before going vegan? Um, I guess, no, I don't know. Pizza? I don't know. I never really ate like anything all the time. I just kind of ate whatever, whatever was there. I was, I was never very picky. I guess I'd say pizza. Kara, if you want, you could taste test the banana bread off camera. Off camera? Yeah, okay. Well, I'll just get your voice reaction then. So I'll just zoom into myself. So then, there we 
There we go. But yeah, I'm only streaming for another four minutes, so if you want to come taste it, the banana bread, it's just pointing right here, so you're good to, yeah, just oh, cut it. Yeah, right? Chips. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That would be awful. Yeah. All right, so I'll just uh, put this microphone near you so people can hear your reaction. Can you hear theirs? Yeah. It's like a, a stadium just cheering for you to eat the banana bread. Eat the bread. Eat the bread. Tastes like banana bread. <laughs> Is it good with the chocolate chips? Mm -hmm. Can you taste them? Uh, there's more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't and think about bread. it. Yeah, I couldn't. It's I a lot on top. Oh yeah, I only put it on top. I I didn't think about oh. it until after I uh, I was like, dang it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's not really good though. Mhm. Mm we want to hear ASMR tongue action and everything. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I'm always grossed out by that. Because I like that book, Who Ate My Mac and Cheese. Um, so much to learn about that. I was a vegetarian for two, 22 years, and I think a vegan for like three-ish. Okay. It's been so long. Love your channel. You and your family are adorable. Thank you. Bye-bye, Craig. Got to finish uh, getting for getting ready for work. I work evenings. Okay. See ya. Good luck. Honey. Oh, wait. No, it's a different person. Never mind. Twins power, twin powers activate. My cat's breath smells like cat food. That makes sense. All right, so I'm going to be streaming for another three minutes. So if you guys got any burning questions, let me know. <laughs> I'm going to drink some moonshine. Oh, my God, three minutes. <laughs> Twin powers are the best. How are you? I am good. Thanks for the video and the time shared, Craig, and everyone online. Take care. Thank you, and thanks for thanks for being here, Jane, because you helped save my stream. Because you you were there to answer my questions when I did not know the answer. <laughs> not a question, but you have really great hair. Thank you. I got that from my dad. <laughs> What's for dinner? Um, I don't know. I have to talk to Kara about what we should have for dinner. We haven't had pasta in a while, so maybe pasta. We've been having a lot of like rice, beans, and vegetables. Next baking project. Um, well, we talked about it earlier, but it might be a surprise for Kara, so I don't want to talk about it again. You can just go back and watch the video when this goes live. Do I miss me? No. Um, after a while, you get kind of like, I for me at least, after a while of not having me, I get kind of like grossed out by it. Like, it seems kind of disgusting now because you, know, you go long, long enough time, and you just don't want it. It seems gross. Last night I fell asleep. To the peanut brittle video, thanks for putting work into wholesome content during these uncertain times. Yeah, so I'll, I was asked a question recently um, just by someone in my life, so uh, I'm not going to say who exactly it is, but um, they asked me, like, what is what am I trying to do right now in the Hercules Candy channel? And I'm just trying to give people, like, a sense of normalcy, like, once or twice a week. Um, and I just want people to be able to just forget about everything that's going on for, like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And that's, that's basically all I really want to do. And the same thing with like this channel. Like I, I just want to like help people just forget about what's going on, you know, just give them a little escape and a little sense of normalcy. What is the first thing you think you'll do after lockdown? Maybe go to a restaurant or I don't know, go for a run with it. Well, I'll definitely want to hang out with people. I'll hang out with some friends. Okay, well, it's 5.30, so thanks for coming to my stream. I salute you guys. I'll see you guys next time.